twists and turns of IndyCar drama continue this week in Mid-Ohio, where Elio Castroneves looks to overcome a blocking penalty that cost him a win two weeks ago. His teammate, Will Power, hopes to wrap up one title today while increasing his lead in another, while Ganassi teammates aim to chip away at Power's points lead. of 17 on the IZOD IndyCar season takes place here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, host of the Honda Indy 200. Cleveland rocks, but Mid-Ohio rolls through a picturesque 2.258 mile 13 turn road course that offers great vantage points for fans in attendance here. And forget about the drama of Ocho Cinco and T.O. together in Cincy. If you want drama, Mid-Ohio is the place to be. Welcome to IndyCar Central on Versus, where we set the stage for today's 85-lap race. I'm Lindy Thaxton on our Versus stage just off of Pitt Road. As we kick off August, the IZOD IndyCar Series is actually wrapping up a chapter of the 2010 season. This is the eighth of nine street and road courses. It's actually the fourth of five in a row. We wrap up this season with four ovals. Our overall points leader, Will Power, he's pretty much going to clinch the road course championship today. All he has to do is start the race. He just has to take the green flag. And listen to this. Even if Will gets last place and Dario Franchitti, who's second in points, gets first, that's a 53-point difference, and that's the most points that Dario could even get at Sonoma. So Will has got it. Well, the racing community, though, is still talking about the finish two weeks ago at Edmonton. Elio Castroneves sided for blocking with three laps to go, and the win was given to Scott Dixon. We are, of course, going to catch up with Elio in just a little bit, but first we're going to catch up with Scott, where in addition to coming off of a much-needed victory, he is a two-time winner right here. The timing is everything, just enough to get to the finish. There goes Scott Dixon by in front of Frank Keaty. Dixon's ninth career win, third this season. There it is, the double checkers. On a Sunday afternoon in central Ohio, Scott Dixon gets the double checkers and wins his 20th career race. He now is the all-time winner in the IndyCar Series. Over the last three seasons, Will Power leads all drivers with five wins, all in the span of the last eight road and street races. But before the merger with Champ Car in 2008, Scott Dixon was once the IndyCar road king. From 2005, when IndyCar began racing on road and street courses, Scott led all drivers with five trips to victory lane, and Scott is with Robbie Floyd. Target Chip Ganassi Lindy has five victories in mid-Ohio, three in cart, two by you, Mr. Man. You must like this place. Yeah, definitely. It's been a fantastic place for Team Target, and uh, if we could try and get three and match that record, that'd be nice from the Champ Car side, or cart, whatever you want to call it. But uh, IndyCar Series has been fun here. Uh, but more importantly, I can't believe the amount of fans this weekend is packed. You know, everywhere you go, especially when you're driving around on track, the, you know, every piece of grass is full. What about this track suits your style? I don't know. You know, we struggled a little bit in qualifying. All weekend, we've been uh, sort of struggling with, with the car getting into the corners we've had a throttle sticking and and uh you know the idle's been all over the place and stalling sometimes in the pit so we've had to, to make a few changes throughout the weekend with the brakes and the throttle position uh, and even an engine just before the race so uh it's been a bit tedious but um i know the car has good speed and typically for for our team you know we run better in the races which has been something we've tried to overcome in qualifying but uh yet we're starting in, in p5 what's that going to be like for you i mean in case you at home don't know what it feels like i mean you're throttling going in the corner when you're letting off the gas. Yeah, it's tough. You know, at least it's not 50% or something. I think we're getting 20% hanging going into the corner, but it makes downshifting a problem or, or you know, even fuel mileage. And, and this race, you know, because the pit windows are so tight, you, you really need that throttle to close so you can save that fuel when you get off it. And uh, that's going to be a big deal for us today. Lindy Taxi, you know, that setup has to be a little crazy right now, just guessing or whether or not he's going to be pushing going into that corner. Watch out for Scott Dixon. Maybe a repeat from last year. Thanks. 
Thank you very much, Robbie. And even though Will Power did not pick up the win in Edmonton, he did increase his overall lead over Dario Franchitti from 42 points to 50. The top five drivers in the overall standings held their points positions. As mentioned, Will Power has been dominating the Mario Andretti Trophy standings. Currently, you can see he leads Franchitti by 97 points and can pretty much wrap up that title here shortly. Dixon leads Franchitti by three points in the A.J. Foyt standings. That's the top oval driver. With the final four races of the season on ovals, both Ganassi drivers hope to pile up the points on Power, who is eighth in the oval standings. There are 49 points behind Dixon. So in addition to wrapping up the Mario Andretti title this week, Will Power wants to pile up those points in the last two road courses of this season. Well, we will talk to the road and street course dominator when IndyCar Central on Versus returns. sports car course. Did you know that Johnny Rutherford won the first IndyCar race here 30 years ago? But eight drivers have won multiple times, including Scott Dixon. Look on your screen there. You can look at some of the other legendary names who have won here, including Emerson Fittipaldi and Michael Andretti. Well, Jack Root is in the IZOD Performance Pit Center with another driver who would like to add his name to that list. Indeed, Lindy, and we're with Will Power, who is about to win the Mario Andretti Trophy for road course prowess. And we were talking about left foot braking, and so we decided we'd go to our big monitor here and analyze it. This is Danica Patrick from one year ago here at Mid-Ohio. We're talking about left foot braking, and it's something that you do, Will, that really comes into play with the use of your left foot. Yeah, I mean, I I started doing that when I was racing in Europe in Formula 3, where you don't want much, uh, you don't have a big coast phase in the corner, so you go, literally as you're getting off the brake, you're straight back on throttle. Um, and Indy cars become so competitive, it's oh, it's almost like that. Um, the downside is, in the race, you probably use a little bit more fuel, but um, I'm used to it. I think it's very tough to change once you've started a habit, um, so I'm keeping it. Well, now, earlier in the practice sessions, though, did left foot braking come in? to play at all when you decided that you were going to have a little bit of a run-in down there in the corner? No, that was uh, actually, I wasn't breaking there, but um, yeah, that was just a bad mistake. I ran off, got on wet grass and went into the wall pretty hard, so uh, my fault. Hey, rebounded pretty good though. You start on a pole again, you're on the brink. Once you take the command to start engines, you have won the Mario Andretti Road Racing Trophy. But there's still, standing between you and the Ultimate Championship, are a string of oval track races to end the season. How big a monkey is that on your back? I'm aware of it very much so uh, you know obviously I'm trying to get as many points on these road courses but six races to go four of them are ovals you got to be competitive in six races well let's concentrate on today and best wishes and good luck thank you very much it's Akuma Sato Jack with his best starting position ever in the IZOD IndyCar Series how good does it feel in third and how are you starting in third I think it feels fantastic. Obviously, uh, I'm very pleased with yesterday's result. It always good feeling in a Q1 career, Q2 career, get into the first and top six. It always big satisfaction. And uh, I was able to commit, you know, this circuit and a brilliant circuit and enjoy drivable. So, I think you know, starting in a um, second low is obviously the best possible um, position to achieve the highest uh, highest race uh, weekend for me. I think my answer was uh, Lindy Thaxon is Takuma Sato got to actually test at this track, not to long ago and just like all the other road courses that are permanent road courses he qualifies in the top six thank you robbie we have some honda engine news we want to pass along after the agreement expires in 2011 they say they are committed to 2012 and beyond the cost will be reduced by up to 40 percent will be a 2.4 liter twin turbocharged v6 this opportunity to create some new uh, engine rules and new car starting with 2012 gives us and I think the league an opportunity to try and encourage some competition and change, mix it up, reset, you know, for all the teams and all the competitors. Uh, and uh, from there, we'll, we'll move forward with who can uh, evolve their car uh, to the front fastest. In some driver news, officials are letting 27 cars take the field today. All told, eight drivers are making their first start at Mid-Ohio, and two, J.R. Hildeband and Francesco Draconi, they are making their first IndyCar Series start ever. 
also, this is the first time that the last four Firestone Indy Lights champs have ever started an Indy car race together. They are J.R. Hildebrand, Rafael Matos, Alex Lloyd, and Jay Howard. And speaking of Firestone Indy Lights, they took to the track earlier today. Martin Plowman was on pole. You can see in the yellow number two behind him, James Hinchcliffe trying to get in there early, but Plowman just slams the door shut. Hinchcliffe working as hard as he can. And take a look at this, just pushing a little bit too much in turn five, slides off course. And then when he comes back on, look right there, he almost takes out his teammate, Adrian Campos Jr., Jr., when he rejoined the race. There at the end, Martin Plowman took it. He led flat to flag, bringing a win to Andretti Autosport. Dan Clark came in second. Charlie Kimball came in third. Now let's look at the updated points for Indy Lights. J.K. Bernays still leading there. Hinchcliffe in second, Plowman in third, Kimball in fourth, and Sebastian Saavedra in fifth. Also, back in the field for IndyCar today, hometown favorite, Graham Rahal. He's starting 25th. Graham, who grew up and lives in Ohio, will be racing for Newman Haas in five of the six remaining races. Not his first trip here. Take a listen to this. Daddy, Eddie, and gentlemen, start your engines! Yes, that was Graham Rahal back in 1998. And speaking of hometown heroes, it's time to salute this week's National Guard hometown hero, Sergeant First Class Sean Clifton. Sergeant Clifton has served 16 years in the military, nine with U.S. Army Special Forces. In his second tour of Afghanistan last year, he was wounded during a raid. He has undergone more than 20 surgical procedures. He's currently attached to the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force in Columbus, Ohio. Sergeant First Class Sean Clifton, today's National Guard hometown hero. Well, when we come back, we will take a look at the dramatic finish at Edmonton two weeks ago. We will talk to the driver in the middle of it all, Elio Castroneves. You are watching IndyCar Central on Versus. In America. Welcome back to Mid Ohio. We are just over 10 minutes away from the start of today's Honda Indy 200. Well, two weeks after Edmonton, everybody is still talking about the final three laps of that race. Well, Elio was black flagged and he didn't win what could have been his second win of the 2010 season. Well, like any sport, the IndyCar series has a set of rules and drivers and teams are expected to follow them. But because the diversity of tracks that we have here in the IndyCar series, we have nine street and road courses, each event requires its own set of track specific rules. About three hours Hours before each race, there is a driver's meeting led by Brian Barnhart. And we begin with a recap of the Edmonton driver's meeting. Take a listen. And we shouldn't have any defending or blocking. Again, we'll be visually dividing the breaking point to the entry uh, in the corner in the half. You can only be on the inside half if you're overtaking someone and attempting to pass. If you're down there when you're being passed, that's blocking. And don't impede the progress of the car behind you or move your car in reaction to uh, following actions of a car behind you. On a restart with three laps to go and Elio in the lead. As they take the green flag, you can see that Elio remained on the inside half of the track, forcing Will Power to the outside. And in the battle between the Penske teammates, Scott Dixon gets around Will Power for second place. So when race control black flags Castro Nevis at that point, it's Scott Dixon who is given the lead. Instead of the required pass-through penalty down pit road, Elio decided to stay out and take the checkered flag first. But it was Dixon who was awarded the victory. And as many of you saw, Elio showed uncharacteristic emotion, first confronting IndyCar technical director Kevin Blanche. Then, taking it up with the flag stand, before grabbing league director of security Charles Burns. Later, we caught up with both Brian Barnhart and Elio Castroneves. Two laps to go, I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just ridiculous. I never moved my line. Uh, I actually gave room him outside. Uh, and uh, when you put, uh, when you go side by side like that with your teammate, uh, and the guy just swept, it's literally, literally, just take it away from you. It's, it's, it's just absurd. 
We divide the track physically in half, and on the road courses from the breaking point to entry, they're told you can only be on the inside half if you're attempting to overtake someone. If you're on the inside half while someone's trying to overtake you, it's blocking. Well, since Castro Neves did not perform his drive through penalty, race control gave him a 20-second penalty. That placed the number three car in 10th place. This past Monday, IndyCar Series officials also fined Elio $60,000 and put him on probation for the remainder of the season. Moments ago, Jack Aru caught up with Elio. And Lindy, Elio Castro Neves comes to Mid-Ohio with a $60,000 fine. Let's talk about that first year position about that. Well, um... I have to thank all the fans, you know, uh, especially with the support they gave me here. Uh, but the first thing I got here, this little girl, probably about eight or ten years old, and she wrote me this. I'm like, you know, uh, let's move on, and uh, and that's why for me, it's uh, I'm just gonna move on and uh, try to do the best race I can over here. Let's talk about what it's gonna take to have a good race for you. I mean, your teammate William Power, as you <laughs> like to call him, is really making mincemeat of the rest of the competition. He is courses. definitely an incredible talent. Uh, he certainly showing a lot of uh, special uh, uh, in, in diversity situations um, and um, again I mean he's uh, he's proving he's a, he, a good talent and not only that he's leading the championship for us that's starting on top six we're gonna try to do everything we can we can catch him we can pass there because it's a tough track but in the end of the day we just gotta be there in the end any urgency on your part knowing that we're to the second the last part of the season and you've got to catch William as you like to call him well certainly our my uh, uh, my strategy right now is to win. I don't have more about finish second, third, or fourth. I mean, you got to collect as much points as you can, and that's where we're going to go. Wendy? Thank you, Jack. And now I want to bring in two of the gentlemen who will be calling today's race, and they are also former open-wheel drivers themselves, Jan Bikas and Robbie Buell. So, guys, what do you make of the events over the last two weeks? Well, Lindy, you got to make the trip north of the border to Canada. Robbie and I were in a studio in Indianapolis, so we didn't get to see that tape of the driver's meeting until after the race. But clearly, Robbie, when we saw that tape, Brian Barnhart was crystal clear that by the letter of the law, Castro Neves had broke it. Agreed? Yeah. So, sorry, Elio, those are the rules. But if you watched our qualifying show yesterday, we talked about not only the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. I still like the way that we called it. Down into turn number one, it was a wide open racetrack. It wasn't really unsafe in my mind. It was just good, hard, clean racing. And we loved it. But Brian Barnhart was so specific, he really had to levy that penalty. So both Robbie and I have gone to Brian Barnhart and said, hey, what about making an exception to the rule when it comes to restarts? Here's what he had to say. When your rule is based on safety, whether it's a restart or uh, a full speed lap, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So, uh, you know, again, I think that's one that, as as a as an official, we're going to be open to these guys' input on it. We're always going to be telling them what we think the potential ramifications are and where it can go. Uh, ultimately, though, if, if the majority of the people feel that's the direction we need to go, whether it's a restart or change the rule altogether, we need to be responsive to that. And, and, you know, it's also a balancing of all those factors as well as what's in the best interest of our sport. Making our sport simple enough for the fans to follow is important for us as well. Well, we heard Brian say safety is number one. We all agree. But the competition side of it, it's very difficult to pass on road courses. And what this rule does, it creates opportunity for these drivers to pass, making it more exciting for us as fans. But it's also very good to hear Brian talk about, hey, I'm open to things. And Jan, you and I are in agreement. We're saying, hey, Brian, maybe revisit that rule and it shouldn't be in place on restarts. That could have made a little different show for Elio at Edmonton. But you want to talk about excitement and passes that that rule's great. Let's take a look at Brazil. You have a very long back straightaway, a good braking zone. We saw tons of action, good clean passing there. There was a passing for the for the lead at the end of that. And that race, believe it or not, there were 95 passes through there. So the rules are working and making it exciting for the fans. So Robbie, we have to really take the counterpoint. If you've been reading the news, you certainly know that Castro Neves has come out and said, I think those rules are inconsistent. They're enforced in an inconsistent way. And Toronto keeps coming up. Well, what we've since found out is they defined the braking zone as to where you had to move over for Toronto as the Budweiser Bridge. Yes. So if you watch the replay first of Castro Neves and Vitor Mira, this contact happens before the Budweiser Bridge, but not the case for the next one with Briscoe. Exactly. And Graham Rahal, who hits the back of Briscoe here, 
The reason that there was no penalty on Graham is because Briscoe was blocking. He was on the inside of the track at that Budweiser Bridge. So, now, let's talk about mid-Ohio here today. The rules are very clear for blocking. There's two very good passing zones, pass into turn two and into turn four. And at the breaking point between the cones, between three and four, where that breaking point starts to the turning point, if you are trying to overtake somebody, hey, you better be at the inside of those cones. If you're not trying to pass somebody, you better be on the outside lane. And there's one great exception to that rule, and that is when you're two by two on the start, you can drive on the right-hand side of the track. Look for fireworks right from the green. Thank you guys for your take on that, and guess what? We're about to start. Thanks for joining us on IndyCar Central on Versus. We're back right after this. ago in Edmonton on a restart with three laps to go. Elio Castro Nevis was called for blocking while battling his Penske teammate and points leader Will Power, giving rival team Ganassi driver Scott Dixon the win and slightly closing the championship gap. I don't do nothing! Oh, don't stop with these oh, we don't create the situation. We respond to it. If you're on the inside half while someone's trying to overtake you, it's blocking. I got to run on him and he blocked me. Literally, just take it away from you. It's 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 just absurd. Will Elio Castro Nevis have something to prove today? He'll take on his teammate and points leader, Will Power, the 2010 Road Warrior who's looking for redemption from Edmonton and a road course championship. The Eyes on IndyCar Series corners into the winding roads of Mid-Ohio today. Two road course races remain this season, and two teammates have two different reasons they want to go to victory lane. Mid-Ohio race fans, are you ready? It's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome the president of Honda Performance Development, Mr. Eric Bergman, as he gives the command. Drivers, start your Honda engines. The command has been given. The command has been given. The command has been given. Seven cars firing to life as we get set for the next-to-last road course race of the 2010 IZOD IndyCar Series. Wonderful crowd on hand here as the cars are getting set to roll off onto this 13-turn, 2.25-mile road course, whose racing goes back to 1980, 30 years ago, when Johnny Rutherford took the checkered flag here. And, of course, Johnny Rutherford will be the driver of the uh, pace car here today. E.J. Piso a little slow in getting off, but now his number eight car is fired, and away he goes. There's Rutherford in the Honda pace car right there. Right behind the pace car is Will Power, and his incredible season continued yesterday when he won the Peak Bowl Award, his sixth on road courses this year, and his seventh overall, tying him with Team Penske teammate Elio Castro Nevis for most poles in an IZOD IndyCar season, and there are five races to go this year. $10,000 Will Power, the winner of the Peak Pole Award yesterday here at Mid-Ohio. Coming down the uh, 
area of the racetrack where they will receive the green flag. Up there in the uh, right corner of your screen, you see the yellow flag waving. That's where they will get the green flag. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup here. Lining up beside Will Power in row number one, Dario Franchitti. In row number two, Takuma Sadho, his best start of the year, and Ryan hunter Ray fifth in points. And Ryan hunter Ray, he has absolutely been the standout for Andretti Autosport on road courses, so he should be in for a great day today. Scott Dixon, the winner two weeks ago in Edmonton, and Elio Castro-Nevis in row number three, starting seventh. Ryan Briscoe, the winner on the Texas Oval this year, but E.J. Biso coming off a top ten finish at Edmonton. Row number five, Marco Andretti and Simona Di Silvestro, who finished ninth at Toronto. And she had a real shot at getting in the Firestone fast six, but had a clutch problem before she could get out and really run a hot one. She has been fast all weekend. Row number six consists of Justin Wilson, who has finished second twice this year, and Hideki Muto, who finished fifth here last year. As you take a look at the rest of the lineup, there have been 16 different winners in 25 races here at Mid-Ohio. The farthest back the winner has ever started was eighth when Alinzer Jr. won in 1995 and Juan Pablo Montoya won in 99. The race has been won from the pole 10 times, but not since 2003. And eight times, the Mid-Ohio winner has gone on to win the championship. There you see one of the two drivers making their debut, Draconi. Francesco Draconi will be making his debut in the series this year, taking over the Conquest car, which was has been driven all year by Mario Romancini. And there is the Hall of Fame football player, Lynn Swan, who's in the starter stand as the crews and the teams are given the one more lap to go signal. Board cameras will be carried today by hometown favorite Graham Rahal, whose father won here in 1985 and in 86. Tony Kanaan finished fourth here in 2007. Dan Weldon is in the National Guard car, starting in 13th position. Elio Castroneves, a two-time winner here at this facility. Scott Dixon will carry an onboard camera. He's the other two-time winner in the field, and he is also the defending champion of this event. Cars warming and cleaning their tires as we get set for the start of today's Honda Indy 200. Here's Jackaroo. Jax Mike has decided that we'll uh, take a pit stop. It'll be back in action soon, we hope. <laughs> As the field begins to line up behind the pace car, they'll line up two by two. Here are the tire designations. Starting on the blacks, there you see the seven drivers who have chosen to start on the blacks. And everybody else on the red alternate. Boy, we have just had great weather here this weekend, and the crowd has responded favorably. As as I think Elio said, there are people everywhere in the grandstands and along the track. And you hear that from all the drivers as you roll down into turns four, five, and six, where the elevation is, and you got fans everywhere. All the drivers just love it how they're just lined around this circuit. It's a great place to watch a race from. You can bring your uh, lawn chair and your blanket and just have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Here we go. Here we go. Will Power leads him down off of corner number two. And the Apex Brazil green flag waves. We are underway at Mid-Ohio. And look for guys going around the high side here in turn three as it sets them up Ooh. for four. Can it help you out a little bit? Sato slotting in there in second yeah. place. And we have a car off track. It's TK. Tony Kanaan is off course. If he can keep it running, he'll be okay. He'll obviously drop to the back. Corner workers telling him to stay inside. He'll be able to regroup from here. Winner in Iowa earlier this year on the Oval, Tony Kanaan with a slide off here in the early going. As we watch the activity up front, Power has the lead. Takuma Sato running second. Then it's Franchini and Dixon, the top four. 
Now, pretty impressive for Sato. If you really think about it, all the permanent road courses that we have been on this year, he is qualified in the top six. So he is absolutely at home on this type of circuit and keeps getting more and more comfortable with these cars and how to get the most out of it with his crew. He is coming off his best finish of the year, a ninth at Edmonton two weeks ago. Rafa Matos in the HP car there was just sneaking a little look down the inside of Adam Carroll, who's driving for a Watch Frankini, though. Watch Frankini in third place. He's going after Sato. He's got it. No, Not he yet. <laughs> Not <Wow>. quite. <laughs> well, the one thing there, if you keep the momentum on the high side of that turn three, it puts you on the inside as you get to that next corner. So there is a play to be had there. He left the door open, but he also took advantage, as you said, Robbie, on being on the proper line well, for the next corner. Let's just go back. He didn't leave the door open. Those are the rules. When you commit, if you're not trying to pass somebody going in there, you got to be on the left-hand side of the track, creating an opportunity for Dario to get in there. I, we love it. All right, we saw TK off course. Let's take a look at what might have happened. Rafael Matos, J.R. Hildebrand, he goes by them on the outside, and he's out of the groove. Yep. Just now carried he is in. really out of the groove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just carried in too much speed, ran out of track. This is from Ryan hunter Ray's on-board camera. Whoa! Whoa. Ryan Briscoe locks him up. Thank I noticed, you very much. I noticed that Briscoe and Castro Neves both, at least on that opening lap, were having a bit of trouble keeping up with the group. Certainly not as fast as power. Look at this inter-squad rival here. Yeah. That's Kanan going after Danica Patrick. And this is for 23rd position. And so this is coming really to the best passing zone, the long back straightaway, sets you up here. Look to the cones between three and four. That's the designation in the track, right there where those cones are. A better perspective of the track from high above it. Just a great... And that's what they call Silver. Thunder Alley as you come off of turn nine. Between those trees, if you go back and watch over there, it just kind of reverberates all back through. And it's a very quick, demanding physical section. Now through the carousel, you can certainly get the idea right away. This is a driver's racetrack. Then by the front straightaway, which they're being scored now. Of course, they start the race on the other side, but that's the pit straightaway. It's shorter. And Robbie, turn one, that takes commitment. Love turn one. One of my favorite corners in all the country of all the racetracks. It that's takes commitment. That that's you it. would say that it looks like such an innocent place. Oh, <laughs> if you're ever at this racetrack, go to the outside of the corner and watch the cars go through there. It's like they defy the laws of gravity. <laughs> um, but one thing this track is, and you hear some drivers don't talk it up, but a lot of them do. It is absolutely physical. Look at Dario. He had a run on Sato. And he got it. Oh, and Frankini was on his overtake button, so he used one of his overtake assists. Making a move, and at the same time, Scott Dixon and Sato actually used it in defense. But he's got that position. Nice job. I think Dario but certainly is somebody who's we got to watch to, to challenge power. Well, because Dario was very confident in, in what, what he said when he got out of the car. He's like, I really like my car. I'm really happy with it. I think we made good strides. He worked very hard on Friday night with his engineer, Jeff Simmons, because he wasn't happy at the first day. Well, they got it right, and you get that sense from him. So Scott Dixon now is in second position, or make that fourth position. Will Power has now led in 11 of the 12 races this season. The only race he has failed to lead was on the Oval at Kansas. Stay with us for more on Versus Nonstop. There's a reason why, in four years of powering every car in the Indianapolis 500 race, not a single Honda engine has failed. It's not the parts we make them from. It's the part we put in to every Honda. Feel the excitement? Fast peak performance. And it's electric. Look out. Be sure everybody's safe with the Peak Backup Camera System. It installs in minutes, and anyone can do it. Check the color monitor, and you'll see what you can't see. Stop accidents before they happen. Protect your family with the Peak Backup Camera System, and be safe out there. Inside, outside, all around your car. When you peak, you win. 
how do websites work? First, a network of electro-binaramic box encoders, known to humans as computers, intramagnates with a series of optic tube conductors. It then transmits skitter pulse signals via the Quijibo Highway. When the rotary costal on it circumcises with the hyperflagellant semidundan motherboard, a domain name is chosen, and you're on your way to co-nertial via flutation. Why don't you just use GoDaddy.com? They make websites easy. Why don't you just go to lunch? Simple to build websites start at less than $5 a month. Right now at GoDaddy.com. Monday on the Daily Line, Boston fans, beware, because we are talking to the one, the only, Bucky Bleepin' Dent, who's going to tell us about the Yankees-Red Sox rivalry, past and present. Plus, we'll get a visit from Rob Schneider, and Rob the Numbers Guy starts his in-depth college football preview. That's Monday at 11 on the Daily Line, only on Versus. We know because we know college football. Catch Pittsburgh at Utah and Wisconsin at UNLV on Versus. Welcome back to Mid-Ohio where we are under green flag conditions. And guys, I wanted to give you a strategy, but we took a big power hit down here at the Speedway and everything went out. But we're, we want to talk a little bit about the pit stops. Now, normally, you can make this race in two pit stops. It's going to be close, but you could do it. But the issue is the windows and when to pit are so narrow. So what you want to do, you want to make sure that your racing is not impeded. But when you come into the pits, especially if it's under yellow, here's where it's going to get really dicey. First of all, this pit wall area, normally it's about two and a half feet high. It is now four feet high. So that's one of the issues that we're dealing with. But more importantly, as you see these pit stalls right here, they are the smallest on the IndyCar circuit. At 35 feet, the only track that had pit stalls this small, Nazareth, Pennsylvania. When was the last time we ran there? It could get dicey under a yellow when everybody decides to have feeding time at what I like to call here the zoo. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion about that in the driver's meeting today. And the reason the pit boxes have been shortened is the fact that we have 27 cars and it only really accommodates 26 on pit lane. But because of 27, the pit boxes have been shortened to 35 feet. Now, there was an incident on pit road earlier today. Mario Marias had three pit members who were slightly injured, but apparently all of them are working today. Will Power has led in 13 of his last 14 starts. He is the leader of this race as we go back through the field with Honda. Running in second position, officially nine-tenths of a second behind. The leader is Dario Franchitti. And I just talked about how Dario is working hard with his engineer, Jeff Simmons, I said, I meant to say his brother, Chris. I get those boys confused every <laughs> once in a while, both in the racing uh, world. And that's, of course, because Chris did engineer Jeff, who was also a driver. Now, of course, Santos had a great run, as well as Scott Dixon. And we heard, certainly, for Scott Dixon, changing an engine and having problems with that throttle, as Robbie Floyd had said. That's kind of a crazy way to start a race. And look at Ryan hunter Ray right behind. He's closing in. Ryan hunter Ray is in fifth position. He's also in fifth position in the point standings, leading the charge for the Andretti Autosport team. And hunter Ray is one of the guys that said this is absolutely the most physical racetrack that we're at. Elio Castroneves runs about five seconds behind the leader, Will Power. And right behind him is his Penske teammate, Ryan Briscoe. And check out right behind is Simona de Silvestro. Imagine it's a much lower budget team. She's chasing down two Penske team members thinking, hey, this day's going pretty well. EJ Viso had a problem at the very start. Couldn't get the car started on pit lane, but he caught up and is now running in the ninth position behind Simona. And There's Wilson, Justin Wilson. Yeah. You know, I talked to him this morning, and he had a little incident with Briscoe, and he hurt his right hand, and his doesn't have his thumb. He can't use that. It's really going to be a long day for him in that cockpit. Different colors for Marco Andretti this weekend in the 26 car, flying the Meyer colors. He's running in 11th position. 12th is Hideki Muto. Got a teammate this weekend in Graham Rahal, yep. the Newman Haas team. National Guard car of Dan Weldon runs in 13th position as we continue to go back through the field and to the carousel is the 13th corner and onto the front stretch. Mario Marias spoke to him when he went over to the infield hospital check on his crew members, said he that with the 35-foot pit boxes that Jack mentioned, it was just too tight, and he clipped three of them with the front wing. 
getting in there apparently okay and working the race. Mario Marias is running 14th. Alex Tagliani will be the driver running in 15th position. There he is, easily seen because of his name on the back, back wing, as is the case with Bertrand Baguette. And Bertrand Baguette, I mean, if you look at the year results in black and white, it doesn't do justice of what that guy's been doing with Conquest Racing. Yeah. That's my take. He was very quick in some of the practices uh, this weekend. The 27 car is being driven by Adam Carroll. He made his season debut at Watkins Glen. Rafa Matos is next in 18th position, and behind him is Alex Lloyd. And then another guy making his eyes on IndyCar Series debut, the 2009 Firestone Indy Lights champion, J.R. Hildebrand. He'll also be in this car at Sonoma in two weeks. If you ever want to see how evenly matched these cars are, they're just nose to tail. Vitor Mira with ABC Supply AJ Foyt entry following up behind and Canons in pits. So the first to make a pit stop is Tony Canon. And, and why he is coming in right now is we saw he was marred way back in traffic. So probably part of the theory is say, hey, let's get him in right now. We got these sticker reds on there. They're a little faster tire, more grip to him. But he doesn't have anybody in front of him. So right now he can run as fast as he wants. I mean, he's got to run as fast as he can. In qualifying yesterday, TK apparently had a really good lap going, but he comes up on Simona Di Silvestro. She was gapping herself, so she slowed down. Then she stands on it. We thought she was going to leave the door open for Kanan. She didn't. She's not quite up to speed. She's trying to get in. She did transfer. Unfortunately, Kanan did not. He had to slow down and gap himself, but he was on the outside looking in. Well, look at her go today, and I really think she may have had a shot at the top six without having that clutch problem. Down to Jack Aroot. And Robbie Buell, you are absolutely right. I check with Tom Anderson, and remember we talked about if you're being slowed up or impeded by some traffic, go out of sequence, get off there. You always want to race the racetrack, not others. That's exactly what Tony Kanaan has done. It's been confirmed by his team. Meanwhile, Will Power continues to lead. The top five are Power, Franchitti, Sato, Dixon, and Ryan hunter Ray at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in North Central Ohio. Honda Indy 200 on Versus is presented by Honda, the engine supplier for the IZOD IndyCar Series. And by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. And by Apex Brazil. To learn more about our Brazilian goods and services, log on to experienceourenergy.com. I compete with sugarcane ethanol. 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 Ethanol is the fuel we use on every IZOD IndyCar race. Cane ethanol diversifies America's fuel supply, and it should be in your tank. It's in mine. Learn more about advanced renewable sugarcane ethanol. jump your dead battery. Just hook it up and start it up and you're on your way. And the Peak Jump Starter has a low charge alert system and alarm sounds when your jump starter needs recharging. Get a Peak Jump Starter so you'll always have the protection of power when you need it. In 
inside, outside, all around your car. When you peak, you win. Situation stays the same at Mid Ohio Sports Car Coast. The Izon IndyCar Series. Will Power leads by just about a second over Dario Franchitti. There's Franchitti running in second position as they come down the front stretch and complete another lap. That's the uh, 14th lap out of 85 that make up the race here today. The Izon fastest lap of the race so far by Will Power on lap number 12. You see that maximum cornering 3.5 G's. You actually do that in three places on the racetrack, turn one, turn four, and turn 11. So this is a high commitment, high physically demanding racetrack. Robbie Floyd is down on pit lane. Tom, we noticed TK coming in nowhere near that window. Why come in so early? Uh, we're just getting held up in traffic there. We couldn't move and looking at that time to the leader and what we were losing. Uh, if we waited till a full stand, we were going to be close to being lapped. So we got to get him out into some free air. You went from a road race to an off-road race for a while. Any damage to the car? No, it doesn't seem to be. Everything seems to be running right right now. Watch out for TK, Lindy. Well, Robbie, since this started, all we've heard on the radio is a save fuel, save fuel, trying to extend that window. Well, Santo, running in the top five, he's doing a good job of it because they just told him, you're doing so well that you can keep this up, and we are already about to gain a lap on what was our original window. And Simona, they told her, your fuel is good, but Bob, they said, do not be afraid, Simona, to save a little bit more. Yeah. Boy, Sato is, is looking real good here, and with the uh, fuel saving, if you will, he has uh, not lost any uh, ground to the fourth place car of Dixon. And Bob, the reason that they're trying to save fuel, and Will Power told me, he says because of the cold tire penalty, meaning that if you can run longer before you stop, you can get that advantage to where someone goes out on cold tires, it takes a long time for them to get up to speed. So you're always going to have an advantage if you can pit later because you can gain track position. He says the penalty here is bigger than a lot of places they've been. And I, I remember that very clearly from last year. The first round of pit stops, Scott Dixon went a lap longer and he came in the pits and he came out ahead of Briscoe and gained the second spot that time. So I mean that is very clear at this facility. And I would not be surprised if one Dario Franchitti just coming through the screen there is saving a lot of fuel and is trying to get one more lap then Will Power. Remember, Will Power told us when he talked to Jack Aroot that by left foot braking, he uses more fuel. Dario uses the right. Hmm. On board with Graham Rahal, running back in 22nd position, a guy who certainly knows this racetrack. And just watch how busy he is working that wheel. Incredibly physical around here. Now, you're coming onto the front straightaway, second gear, accelerating up there. There's full throttle. Coming to that turn one, that turn that I just say is the most challenging corner there is in, in motorsports. And for Graham Rahal, if you're wondering, how did he go from being the fastest in one session to qualifying nearly at the back? They had a differential problem. Of course, the differential puts the power to the ground to the two rear wheels. It actually destroyed itself to where it wasn't working properly. And, Robbie, that's not just power down. That affects the whole handling of the car. Okay, come to the fastest section of the racetrack, the best passing zone, 66, 69, yeah. 169, pretty quick. But can you imagine how frustrating it is after the first day of practice to leave this track yeah. in P1, and then you come back the next day in qualifying, <laughs> and you're starting down in P25 where he was, and that's, that's frustrating. Yeah. Just every time you get on the power, the way the differential grabs totally affects the balance of the car. If it's off, it'll push. That's why he was pushing in some place, loose at others. Thank, thankfully, they found it last night. There is a lap around Mid-Ohio, and Will Power continues to enjoy an advantage of about a second over Franchini, about two seconds over Takuma Sato. World Extreme Cage Fighting returns live to Versus. This August, the Phantom Weight Belt is on the line in a rematch of two of the most explosive fighters. Champion Dominic Cruz set to make his first title defense against top contender Joseph Benavides. World Extreme Cage Fighting, live August 18th, 9 o'clock Eastern, only on Versus. Well, one of the guys whose name is magical in the world of sports is standing by with Jack Aroot.
Yeah, he's one of the Hall of Famers of this, of course, this Hall of Fame weekend in nearby Canton, Ohio. Lynn Swan from the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the guy that I worked with for so many, so many years. What? What did you say? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. We worked together for a lot of years. Long Great time. to see you again, Jeff. Let's talk a little bit. You were the Grand Marshal here, but this isn't your first visit to IndyCar racing. You got to see the Indy 500. Are you starting to get hooked? Well, yeah, it, it's so exciting. It, it was great to be there. Certainly, we came there. Um, I was sponsoring the race series and the Hall of Fame, and a lot of my t uh, Hall of Fame classmates were in there watching the race. It was great. And the fact that I was able to be at the race, Chip Ganassi, whose team won it, Chip is a Pittsburgh guy, and I've known Chip, and it was great to see him. You know, he's having great success this year. Now, you got to wave the flag today, and i got to give you high marks, okay? You held on to it like a pass. Uh, I, I held on to it. Jack, I have to tell you, I didn't want to drop it. There was a gust of wind that came along, kind of took the flag back, but I had a good grip on it, held on to it. So I may not be able to run 50 yards down <laughs> field, but I can hold on to it if you can get it to me. Hey, guys, I want to give you a racing information about Swanee. You know the little portable cameras that we use on pit road? They were originally originated by Lynn Swan's idea. Bob Goodrich from ABC Sports said, yeah, we can do that. Then Lynn left and went up in the booth, and I inherited Lynn's position. They said, we can't call it the Swanee Cam. He said, you know what? See how you're using it now? We'll just call it the Jerk Cam. And ever since then, that's what we call it. And there you have the origination of that. <laughs> <laughs> well... Power has been able to inch his way just a little bit more ahead of Dario, but uh, they continue to run in the same order of the top five. And we are approaching the pit window. It's somewhere between lap 25 and 30. Correct. And I think something very interesting is going to happen in the second stint. And you guys will be very surprised. You know how Firestone is always telling us that we shouldn't say that the Reds are necessarily softer? They just have higher grip. Grip, yep. Actually found out that the Reds are not only faster, but they may be more durable. I found out after the morning warm-up that the Blacks don't actually seem to last as long as the Reds. So when you have people come in to make the pit stops and put on the Blacks, that next stint is going to be more difficult. Wow. Good information. Let's go down to Robbie Floyd. Well, guys, we talked about the pit one note being between lap 25 and 30. Now, normally you're trying to stretch that window, get as much as you can out of it. But that may not be the case for some of these teams because of how tight these pit, you know, these pit stalls are, only 35 feet. So maybe you come in earlier when everybody doesn't come in. That gives you maybe a clean run in, a clean run out. That could make up a second or two just right there. So normally you're trying to stretch. They may come in early just to try and save themselves some time right here on pit lane. Well, when you do that, Robbie, you then take the risk of that cold tire penalty that we were saying earlier. So do you want clear pit lane or you want the cold tire penalty? I think that if you can, you will go as far as you possibly can pedal it to pit lane. Yeah, and I think this is probably one of the first events that we really haven't seen that much disparity between the blacks and the reds. There's just other things that these guys are watching. And one of the things that they are watching is the graining on the tires. Okay, watch this move. That's J.R. Oh. Hildebrand getting off, was right by our booth, and it showered us with rocks. But look at the momentum that Mira has, as and well as Graham Rahal. Yep. So Hildebrand drops back to 22nd, Mira to 20th, and Rahal to 21st. And the key when something happens with Hildebrand, this being his first time here, is when you drop wheels off like that, you got to just ease the car back down. Don't jerk your hand. Don't jerk the wheel. Just let it track out. You've messed up and ease it back on the track. There goes Graham down yep. the inside. And he moved to the left because he had to by yep. the regulations right. in the old days. If you were slow coming off of a corner, you, you would look. just hug the right-hand side and say, oh, I lost momentum. You're going to have to go the long way I, around. I can't believe you do that in the spirit of just being a good competitor. Wouldn't you just stay on the outside of the track and say, there you go, guys? <laughs> oh, oh so more dust is kicked up, uh, and there's Wilson. And you know why that's happened, guys? I can tell you why. Oh, Whoa. Something's he wrong. just locked it up, didn't he? I was going to say, he said with the problem in his right hand, if that car gets loose, he just can't He can't oh, jerk yeah. the wheel enough, and he's driving all with his left arm. He's I not think doing something's broken. And oh, AJ way. Viso is off course. Wow, you know what this now. is going to mean? This is going to mean you're going to have full That's course first. yellow, and everyone's going to try and stop yeah, in a 35 a Very foot. busy pit lane. And, oh. and we heard from every driver, they said it's going to be crazy if it is a yellow stop like that. And, and you're in the window. Out. You're. 
Now look at, he just, he wanted to come back on lockdown. Well, I think something was wrong with the car, but this is yesterday in qualifying. Frisco has just left the pits, and here comes Justin Wilson uh, flying left, thinks that Frisco is leaving the door open for him, and Kablamo now each thought that the other one took each other out. Now, of course, when Justin gets out, he's got the major height advantage on Frisco, but they never did agree on whose fault that one was. So well, no, you know, actually, Frisco came back later back at the, the trailer and, and apologized to Justin. Oh, yeah, did he agreed really? with our yes, call. Yes, he did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you notice that they both kept their helmets on while they were sparring with each other. And yeah. both of the Dreyer and Reinbold cars have trouble here on Here's almost what it is. the same lap. There's Justin right behind EJ. EJ. Look into the inside. Oh, yes. The left front suspension is broken for Justin Wilson, which is why he didn't continue. The moment that he hit the pavement, watch that. Yes, sure enough, yeah. it's broken that yep. Yep. steering rod or tie rod. E.J. Viso may or may not have damage. Well, Viso was on the right part of the racetrack, but Justin couldn't quite get far enough alongside. Jack Aroot. Guys, let's go back to what Robbie Buell was talking about, and I want to show you an onboard camera. Do you notice that on this onboard camera, take a look at the right hand. Now, basically, what you do when you grasp the when you grasp the uh, the wheel, and I've got a steering wheel here, you tuck your thumb on the inside, and that gives you the leverage that you need to be able to turn the wheel. But Robbie, as you said, your driver Justin Wilson finds himself having to put his thumb on the outside here. The other little nuance that Justin told me about is rather than being able to do the gear up with two fingers, because he's have to get so much leverage from the palm of his hand, he's just you just using a little one finger to go up through the gearbox. And an insult to injury is that. I mean, he's got his right hand on there and his thumb's out of the way. And But he said, basically, my right arm is just along for the ride. He was really doing all the heavy steering with his left arm. And his left shoulder, when he got out of the car this morning after warm-up, mm. was pretty sore. Um, so he was going to be in for a long day. It's not as long as... And he'll be like right now. And yesterday, certainly you could say, okay, Briscoe didn't see him coming and slammed the door. But unfortunately, in this case, I don't think that Justin was far enough alongside. Yellow comes out first full course caution on lap number 24. We're now on lap 25, and the pits are open. So again, we're going to watch this very, very carefully because of the fact that the pits are so very tight here at Mid Ohio as the eight car goes on the hook. This is the front side of that first window in the, terms the of, open. I mean, you come in right now, you may have to be in two more times. You're yeah. going to have to make fuel, if you will, with coming in right now. You're but not it'll just going to get to the one, one But more they'll stop. get some yellow fuel mileage, which is almost three times as much, because it'll still take a lap or two before they get back to green. I think you're solidly inside the window, but yes, Robbie, you'll have to save fuel. What I will say, you'd be crazy to short fill here. you got to take all the fuel while you're there. So oh, you heck could you do. So you can so you can get to that last yeah, lap. You're not position. gonna see anybody fill it up short and try to get out and get track position, I don't think, because then you're toast. You have one more stop for sure or two more. But fellas, when they come under the pits, look at the white line that delineates the inside and the outside of pit road. As they come down, this is such a narrow pit road, it is gonna get a little dicey coming around the corner. If you're towards the front like Will Power, Scott Dixon and Dario Franchitti, you've got to be careful. And if you're behind them, you've got to be extra careful because you have such an early turn. In. This is going to be wild and woolly under yellow here in this narrow pit boxes. Well, the advantage goes to Will Power. He's the very first pit box at the far end. Lindy? Well, we talked about how tight pit lane is. Takuma Sato might be the lucky one. It's not big, but he's got the tiniest gap in front of him because he's next to the Firestone stand. It's not much, but it's there. You can see he's getting the red tires. He says the balance of the car is good. He has asked for no changes. He is down. And there it looks like there might be. And Ryan Hunter Ray. Yep. And there, I don't think he, one of those cars may be damaged. 
And guys, I was down here trying to find out who went out first. Was it Dario or is it going to be power? But they are so close to where both of these lanes, all three lanes, funnel in. There is no way you can fit three cars into that one lane, and that's what happened there at the pit out. Both of the cars that are up front, power as well as uh, Dario Franchitti, both no changes. But power went for scruff blacks, where Franchitti went brand new set of blacks. And it's pretty obvious there's a problem with Ryan Hunter race car. Look at his wheel. He was just kind of going straight there. His wheel's cocked to the left. And there's the bent suspension piece. You can see clearly that top steering arm. Uh, here's what happened. Contact between Elio and Ryan Hunter Ray and, and was, uh, Briscoe was right up there it also. It looked like Briscoe was clean though. I yep. don't think he yeah, got it. So. Yep. All right, under our first full caution here at Mid Ohio. If you know passion, you know my name. If the roar of a race car gives you goosebumps. If you believe that no one ever remembers who comes in second. If you're into checkered flags, chugging milk, burning rubber. You know my name. If you've ever pressed your nose to a chain link fence to get a closer look. If you own a pair of earplugs, if you know Andretti, Rahoff, and Unser, you know my name. You know my name because I've been here from the very beginning. As vital today as I was over a hundred years ago. I am a powerhouse. I am running wide open with no finish line in sight. You know my name. I am then. I am now. I am forever. I am Firestone. And I am proud. It started with two simple words. And now it's time to join in. Announcing the Claim Your Mazda Summer Sales Event. Enjoy the high resale value of Mazda 3, Mazda 6, the driver's alternative to Camry and Accord, or the seven-passenger Mazda CX-9. All available with 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus no monthly payments until November 2010. So why compromise? Claim Your Mazda. Offer ends August 31st. At IndyCar Series. Get tickets now. Call 866 IndyCar or visit IndyCar.com. Here's the situation Alex Tagliani and Tony Kanan pitted earlier. They didn't pit up this time, and so they are running first and second. Dario Franchitti beat Will Power out of the pit, so Dario is third and Will Power is fourth. Now, there is repair going on to Ryan Hunter Ray's car because he was involved in a bumping on pit lane. Dario gets better traction and amazingly gets by, but look at the three-car sandwich here. And that's Ryan Hunter Ray just kind of going to the high side and his right front just getting into to Elio. Look how crazy it is coming out of the pits here. Wow. Uh, oh. oh, that did touch a little bit of Briscoe. Yeah, you're Ryan right. Ryan Hunter Ray's car went over to his right rear, but I don't think he probably heard it. Another angle. Fighting the oh, line. And Castro oh, yeah. Neves got into the wall. Yeah. And did you did you see how Dario beat power to the line? I mean, yeah. Will was trying to get those rear tires to hook up and go, but Dario just had the momentum. A couple of guys are responsible for this full course caution. E.J. Viso and Justin Wilson. They're both with Jack. We're going to start with E.J. First, your version of what happened. Well, I think the overtaking was made too late in the corner. I was already turning and I just suddenly felt that bang in the rear wheel. And I mean, it was too late to, to make that movement in the corner. Let's go get, get uh, a word from Justin Wilson, also has been kind enough to come here. Justin, we heard from, from EJ. Now let's hear your version of what happened. I just got a run on, uh, on EJ going down to turn four, and 
it was I wasn't quite wheel to wheel I was maybe uh, three quarters of the way past and we hit the brakes and I felt he started the uh, slow diagonal for the apex and so I was trying to back out I'm all locked up and you know just uh, didn't leave any room for me to back out of it um, you know I'm sorry for everyone in the Z-Line Designs car and driving my involved. You know, we had a good race going. The car was good. We're keeping up on black tyres, but, you know, you've got to leave some racing room. You know, your corner or not, you got to leave some room to back out. And, Lindy, I asked for them to appear together on camera, and Justin respectfully declined. Let's check in with you. Oh, interesting. Thank you, Jack. Well, remember back at Sato's pit stop, it seemed like it was taking a little while. Well, there was something wrong with the fuel. They don't know what it is, but it was just taking so long to go in. They ended up getting getting a full fuel load, but by the time it should have been done, it wasn't. You can see them behind me talking about it right now, trying to figure out what's wrong. Robbie? Well, Ryan hunter Ray lost a lot of positions, but he did not lose a lap. Broken toe link and had to change the nose. His crew not only made those changes, they got him out on the lead lap. The green flag is going to come out, so we'll see how hard Ryan hunter Ray can charge that Isaac car through the field. Tagliati and TK are running up front. Let's see how quickly they can be run down, if they can at all, by Dario Franchitti running back there in third spot into turn number two. And Dario Franchitti will not be too worried about them. They will be on lighter fuel. He knows that they have to stop two more times. And so as long as Will Power and company are behind Dario, he will not worry too much. If an opening's there, he'll take it, but he's not going to force the issue. But I don't think they're going to be holding him up too much. I mean, TK, once he got to the ring, oh, look, a move. There goes wow. Elliot down the inside of Briscoe. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, there's Just as we're talking about Sato. Yeah, oh, yeah. man. He had lost six positions during the pit stop and was went from third to ninth or whatever. And 11th. now 11th yeah, and now absolutely. this. And you got to think, I mean, obviously, he's like, ah, oh, we've lost that. You know, we had a good car. We lost positions there. i got to do everything yeah. I can to make them up. And you do have to think that way. Mm -hmm. But obviously not where... You know, you got to be aggressive, but not where it can take you out of the race. Right. And that's where the team feels bad, too. I mean, they obviously were trying to get sure. the fuel, and they know they put him behind. He took a yeah. risk. I mean, we'll wait to see exactly yeah. what kind of risk he took. Yeah. But and that's just the psyche, yeah. you know, the mental psyche of a driver, of growing and being able to manage your emotions. I mean, that's just part of it. Here's what oh, happened. Oh, yeah. That, that was just in too hot. That was trying to make up for lost time on pit road. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the tires were there, did their job. Now, here's a great yes. move by Castro Neves. That's an aggressive move, especially on a car that you've already rubbed the pit wall with yeah. on his teammate yeah. at the uh, very same time. And, and your him. teammate should be maybe a little favorable to seeing your other teammate down the inside of you. Yes. Hopefully. Oh, well, it didn't happen in Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! It's safe to say that Sato just was carrying so much speed, no matter what was going to happen, just he, wasn't gonna make, he wasn't going to make that corner. <laughs> Woo! No chance. Go. It's a good thing he didn't take anybody else with him. Yeah. So our second, almost consecutive, full-course caution here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course after 29 of 85 laps. Tagliani and TK are up front, out of pit sequence. It's Franchitti, Power, and Castro Nevis completing the top five. Race number 12 at Mid-Ohio, well underway here on Versus. Stay with us for more racing. Ah, I'm out of wheat thins. My life is officially over. Kind of dramatic. Tabitha. Yes. Okay, do you recall tweeting, ah, I'm out of wheat thins. My life is officially over. Yeah. We got a hold of that. We just want you to be sure that you're aware that we have plenty of wheat thins. And that's for you. That's just a gift. That is a lot of wheat thins. Oh, my gosh. Everybody in the van, let's go. In the truck. You take care, all right? Come on, boys. Who's next? Okay, you know you're going to need new tires. It's inevitable, right? So why not get them from TireRack.com? With TireRack's online research tools, you'll know you're getting exactly the right tires for you, your car, and the way you drive it. All at a great price. Don't just change your tires. Change the way you buy tires. The biggest selection of tires. One more way TireRack is revolutionizing the way you buy tires. TireRack.com. Research. Buy. Deliver. Install. 
At the Indy 500, drivers put complete trust in their cars. But when you're out on the road trying to make it to work, are you sure you can trust your motor oil? Put your trust in Peak Performance Motor Oil. Formulated to protect against thermal breakdown, Peak is the only motor oil tough enough to be the official oil of the Indianapolis 500. Whether you cover 500 miles in a few hours or it takes hours to get to work, you can count on Peak. When you peak, you win. Monday on the Daily Line, Boston fans, beware, because we are talking to the one, the only, Bucky Bleepin' Dent, who's going to tell us about the Yankees-Red Sox rivalry, past and present. Plus, we'll get a visit from Rob Schneider, and Rob the Numbers Guy starts his in-depth college football preview. That's Monday at 11 on the Daily Line, only on Versus. Yeah, IndyCar racing is extremely physical. I've gone into some races where after the third or fourth lap, I'm like, if how many laps to go? This is probably one of the few tracks that both of our esteemed colleagues in the booth, Jan Bikas and Robbie Buell, have actually raced at. And so let's take a look. Let's go back a few years. No, let's go back a lot of years. <laughs> and our own Robbie Buell starts on the pole. Obviously, oftentimes in mid-Ohio, you have heavy, heavy rain. That's Paul Tracy breathing down his neck. He's taking the outside groove, finding some traction, oh, and Paul Tracy yeah. gets by him. It. But he goes after Paul Tracy. He does and let him go, but he overcooks it just like Takuma Sato just did, but he gets going again and he finishes second. Robbie Buell up on the podium along with Paul Tracy. There's oh, a young yeah. thin Robbie Buell <laughs> along with Paul <laughs> Tracy. Nicely oh, done. My gosh. And here's Jan Vikas, my booth mate, on the pole. A good, a good start to that thing. Look at that running the curves. Man, Is that the fast go. way? Excellent job. Now look at this. Drop some oh. wheels coming off. I gotta sneak back on the racetrack. <laughs> I better just take that guy out. I think, is that Tommy Byrne? That's Tommy uh, Byrne. Did he have words for you? A few, yes. Check yeah. this out. Yeah. See, the track was dirty. I get out in the groove here, and then I just I had a lot of trouble getting no, the car yeah. back on the track. It wasn't Didn't we dirty. just talk about once you drop some wheels, just don't don't tr thrash the wheel back on, just ease back on? But you went on to win this thing. Look at that right there. Yeah. You got oh, it, baby. Fist. Woo! Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, I'll look exactly the same now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tommy Byrne and Ted Prappas on the podium. At, you guys had flowers and stuff. That was a better. You had, and medals. That was we good. got medals. That yeah. was good. Jack. Enough frivolity from you guys self-congratulating each other. I want to take a look and do some pit stop analysis here. I think, Jan, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you. I understand what you're talking about with Tony Kanan when you take a look. Kanan pitted so much earlier. When he has to pit again, I think that's an issue. He has a, a 21 laps since his last pit stop. But what I want to show you and what I want to draw attention to is right here. Basically, Alex Tagliani only pitted two laps before that caution, before everybody else pitted. With this, what I'm finding out from the Honda engineers, believe it or not, guys, these cars under caution are making enough mileage that you can add three to three and a half green flag laps for every lap of caution. I like what Tags has done. It's a gamble, but it could play out in his favor by the end of the race. Reasons out, guys. Back to you. The two up front are shown as the biggest gainers. Alex Tagliani and Tony Kanaan lead them to the Apex Brazil restart. And that's, that is a great move for Tags. I mean, he came in just two laps before all those guys, so now he's pretty close to being in sequence with him, and he's got great track position, so that, that's worked out well in this case. A couple of guys running at the back of the lead lap, namely J.R. Hildebrand and Ryan hunter Ray, did make pit stops during this uh, caution to top off. And actually, even though Jack disagrees with me, we actually were saying the same thing. I was saying that Tagliani and Kanan should not pit, that they should go after it and see what they can do. We know that Kanan, yes, is going to have to make two more stops, but Tagliani, and Jack is absolutely correct, that with that yellow, he should only have to stop one more time. So that worked out to be a very, very nice gamble for Alex Tagliani. You know what, Jan? I love it. You know what? We'll see if we agree to disagree. <laughs> hey, we're on the same page here, Jack. We're, we're, we're agreeing. Elio Castro Nevis has Will Power, his teammate, up ahead of him. And it looks as though Elio, I mean, Elio really has got a pretty good car right now. He's getting right underneath the back of Will. If you talk to Elio, he says he has a loose car right now. Robbie's he's fighting that a little bit. Tim Sinderson 
they were concerned, and he might have a little bit of toe. You know, you made that contact with the wall, a little bit of a toe problem, but Ryan Briscoe got behind him and said he doesn't see anything wrong, so everything should be good for the number three car at Ocaster Nevis. And if you remember back, that was a pretty good hit we saw. I mean, he took a good hit on the left side from Ryan Hunter Ray and got out into the pit wall, as you said, Yeah, He's like, man, he even put that. And look at the black and orange car there of Simona Di Silvestro running in seventh spot under attack from Marco Andretti. Yeah, just to kind of, that's a fill your mirrors. Can I break your concentration? No, not that time, but I'm back here. Well, let me say here to wrap up this whole thing about uh, the past, we probably made fun of uh, you two, but it... No. It is, it is a fact that you were both champions in your own right, so uh, we do owe you that much. But it wasn't why I feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, for Simona De Silvestro, what great company as she puts the heat here on Ryan Briscoe. Remember that her primary car burned after a bad crash, and they had to go to the backup car, which is an earlier chassis and much heavier. So she's carrying more weight on the car, which is two or three tenths of a second, the team has told me. And with the kind of budget they have, to be chasing down Ryan Briscoe with a heavier, older car, she is doing a fantastic job. Well, she gets better every time out in the race car, working closer with her guys. And, you know, one area that she's really excelled in, uh -oh. Uh -oh. a little spin off there. Jay Howard. Jay Howard. Driving for Sarah Fisher now, Racing. That is going to bring out a full course because you're stuck right. in that pea gravel up there in, in the keyhole. You're just in an impact zone. There's no getting around it. So we're saying that is good for Tagliani, but bad for Kanan, in my view. The full course caution does come out as we were on board with Dan Weldon there for a moment. Who's running up in ninth position, but Jay Howard is stuck in the gravel. You know, the pea gravel is a good thing because it definitely slows down momentum of a race car if you lose control. But the flip side is, if you don't have momentum of going through it and you slide through it that direction, you're going to sink down in it instead of kind of bahaing through it and try and get out to the grass. Jack? Well, Takuma Sano has stopped by after he's been released by the medical group. And let's go and take a look on the big screen here. And tell us what happened as we watch from on board of Scott Dixon. Yeah, we, um, I, I tried to overtake Scott and taking his tire, but just cold tire, cold brake, and full tank of fuel. We just couldn't stop. The inside was so dusty, and um, now he's just overshoot. Tough to have him out, guys. Remember, he qualified the best, a career best, just yesterday. And everybody thinks this guy's going to win one before the season's out. Certainly being, brings good credentials to the Eyes on IndyCar series, having raced many years in Formula One. And Formula One have tire warmers. Indy cars do not. And that's what can happen. Alex Tagliani is leading his second race this year. He led 33 laps at Texas. But 35 of 85 completed here at Ohio. He's up front again. Come! is still out here at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, and you can get caught up on the mid-season review. It's on Saturday at 6 o'clock Eastern here on Versus. Lindy Thaxton gives us an all-access look at what has become one of the most competitive seasons in history. That's Saturday, 6 o'clock Eastern here on Versus. Alex Tagliani and Tony Kanan are off sequence. Remember what happened in Edmonton? So what do you think Alex is thinking right now with this guy behind him? Hmm. Again, those two off sequence running in third spot is Dario Franchitti, then Will Power and Elio Castroneves. Hey, guys, let me show you a little bit when we talk about trying to keep all four wheels on the ground and the balance that's needed. Easiest way to remember it. These are like, well, this is a race car. Take a table. Have you ever been to a place where all of a sudden when you go and sit in, it rocks back and forth and you've got to wedge it one way or the other? Well, basically, that's what your shock, damper, and your spring combination do. So what you want to do is have all four legs of your, tie, of your uh, table <laughs> on the ground all the time. Shocks and springs and dampers are the way to do it. Let's go back to you. Actually, uh, Professor B has a uh, feature on that, and if we uh, have the time, we'll get it to you, but we want to show you all the racing that's going on here at the Eyes on IndyCar Series race. 
right, the green flag comes out, and we're back to racing once again. Look at Tags timed that yeah. pretty well. He got himself about six, six, seven lengths. He did not use the overtake assist. He just got a really nice start. Now, I will say Jack is correct because I did say earlier that Dario would not be worried about Tagliani or Kanan. That's what he's respectfully disagreeing with. That's correct. Because in the meantime, he's now made good fuel. He won't worry about Kanan, but he will certainly worry about Tagliani now, who should be good to go. Well, I think, you know, again, the, the driver's worried about think. You, as a driver, you just need to drive as hard as you can from beginning to end, no matter what. I mean, you got to be smart, but, you know, a driver, you just hit your marks. Be consistent, especially a place like as physical as here. you got to stay with it and stay after it and pace yourself. On board with the second-place car there of Tony Kanan. We'll reset the field for you on this Honda through the field. There's TK in second position to the leader, Alex Tagliani, hoping to become the fourth Canadian to win here at Mid-Ohio. And in third position is Dario Franchitti. Started in second, he beat Will Power out of the pit area and now runs in third position as Will Power runs fourth. And we saw where Castor Nevis, who's sitting right behind him, was hounding him. He's right there. And he got all the Penske cars right in a row there. Power in four, Elio in fifth, and Briscoe in sixth. Hello. Taking a look back at Briscoe. is Briscoe in sixth, and Simona, who Jan talked about in our uh, grid rundown, is looking good, Jan, in seventh spot. But so is Marco Andretti right behind her. He had a very good warm-up. Didn't have a great weekend up until that point, but they've obviously got the car much more to his liking by the time of the morning warm-up. Scott Dixon. And I, I talked to Dixon before this. I said, you know, what do you got to do to win this race again? He's like, well, the key for us and our team is green stops. If we have yellow stops, that's that doesn't help me. I need green stops because he's so good on that in lap and out lap. How about a shout out to this rookie on the Eyes on IndyCar series this year for Tron Baguette from Belgium. He's in the top ten, running in tenth position. Again, as, as I said earlier, the, the black and white results doesn't do it justice of what what that Conquest Racing has done with Bertrand really does. Started 15th, working his way through. He's one of the few at the moment on the alternates. Lots of people taking this middle stint to run on the blacks. Behind him is Dan Welton, the National Guard car. combination of four, five, and six. You go over that little hill there, you get light, and from this point on, as you come through that four, five, and six, you don't breathe again until you get back <laughs> on the front straightaway. That's how much you're working with this. And Rafa right there, just going through that light right-hander, turn nine, Thunder Alley up along there, talking with Rafa, the driver's meeting, and says, how are things going? He says, I don't know what I got going on. <laughs> oh, man. Here's Graham Rahal running in 14th position. This is the second Newman Haas entry. We know Graham has the speed. Obviously, they had that issue where they didn't qualify well. Now he's just kind of got, got to do something to get him out of sequence and get track position, you know? Alex Lloyd drives the number 19 car for Dale Coyne, celebrating 100 years of Boy Scouting this year. Hideki Muto, who now is behind his teammate, Ray Hall, and coming up from behind, not only is there a mirror, but Ryan hunter Ray. we certainly documented him trying to force his way back into competition, but you know, when you change those steering arms, oftentimes you can't get the car exactly the way it was but, before. But still, the fact that he didn't lose a lap yep. and they got yep. that done, hey, that's, that's a, a great shout-out to your guys in the pit lane and getting that done for you. Behind him, his teammate, Danica Patrick, runs in 20th position. There are 22 cars on the lead lap. Very difficult to pass at this circuit. We've talked about that. 
but to get a pass done, you got to be close enough to the competition in front of you, and then that guy needs to make a little bit of a mistake, or a little bit of a hiccup for you to get by. It really is that difficult, but you got to be hounding him and try and force him in to make him that mistake. Francesco Draconi driving the number 34 car for Conquest Racing in his first start in the Eyes on IndyCar Series. He's an Italian from the northern part of Italy, has run Formula 3000 and Formula 3, and hoping to make a mark here in the United States. Tony Canon runs second here at Mid-Ohio. Alex Tagliani is the leader of this race with Frankini Power and Castro Nevis in the top five. has one. Uh, my girlfriend. My older sister. She has two kids. My college roommate who lives up north. My mom. My mom. Uh, my neighbors. Our neighbors. My daughter. My daughter. We were in the same class in elementary school. My boyfriend. My parents. Our parents. My, lo my lovely wife. And my husband has one. Yeah, as well as Phil I work with. My girlfriend, she moved out east. I'm a city girl. Everybody knows somebody who loves a Honda. Who do you know? You saw a note non-stop that Tony Kanan, second place, came in for the pit stop. And, Robbie, it was a quick one. Eight seconds for Tony Kanan. They're disappointed, though, at Team Kanan because they didn't want to see those yellows. They were hoping they could have stretched it earlier and everybody would have to have, you know, more stops. But as Jan and Jack have been going back and forth, everybody can make it in just one more stop. So they were disappointed with the yellows, but going out there and charging hard nonetheless. Brand new set of red tires, no changes otherwise. He comes out just ahead of Francesco Draconi in 21st position. And we have reached the halfway point of the race. Teammates Will Power and Castro Nevis battle for third, and Ryan Briscoe is in the fifth position. Yeah, they've gapped back from Elio back to Briscoe. It's about two seconds. change when I say by that you see the elevation here but you can hear it I should say as you hear the extra wheel spin it just kind of gets light going across that that combination speaking of elevation change we'll go to a track in two weeks that has a huge elevation change at Infineon on Raceway Sonoma California that two weeks from today and, and very similar circuits from the standpoint that you know, you've got these combination corners and momentum and flow, and if you get behind in one, you never get caught up. You've got to stay ahead of it. 
and that will conclude the road course schedule for 2010. Then we wrap it up with four ovals, Chicagoland, Kentucky, Motegi in Japan, and the finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. By the way, they are still working on the 2011 Eyes on IndyCar schedule. It is expected to be released soon, and when it is, we will have it for you here on Versus. Franchitti about one and a half seconds behind the leader, Tagliani. At this point right now, just kind of the mindsets of Tags, Dario, I mean, you know, they all have some good gaps between them. They're not forcing anybody's hand. They're just kind of clicking off some laps, not making mistakes, maybe saving a little bit of fuel just so they can go as far as possible. But, you know, they're just kind of going in the train as long as they're not getting hung up. And guys, for Dario Franchitti right now, it's what you're, you're really, he's really, con really confused. He's in a conundrum. He knows that if he has any chance of winning the overall championship, he has got to gain some points on willpower. Well, he's doing so right now, but what he likes to do is he likes to lead laps in hopes that maybe he can gain the bonus point for that. But right now, what he wants, what he needs to do is conserve fuel so he can't chase Alex Tagliani down. What about your leader? Let's check in with Lindy. Rob Edwards, the strategist for Tags. First of all, how long are you going to try and stay out here with him? Uh, we're looking to go to lap 55, 56, enough to make sure that we can get to the end still running flat out. What made you take that gamble at the beginning? We just had a feeling. Yeah, your team was joking. We could feel that caution coming. And what's he saying? How's the car feel? He's actually very happy. I mean, you know, when you're out front, everything feels great, right? <laughs> but uh, I mean, he's running the quickest laps. He's run all race, and he's feeling good. Uh, we're just trying to stay doing what we're doing now. Rob, thank you. No problem. Bob. And it's worth pointing out that he is not Lindy, as Rob just confirmed, and as certainly Jack pointed out, he is not off of sequence because that two laps that he fitted earlier, because of the caution periods, he now is going to only have to stop the same number of times as the cars behind him. But when he said lap 55 or 56, he will have to stop most likely a lap or two sooner than Dario and the people behind, and that's the old cold tire penalty we talked about that may play in the favor of those behind him. I have the man with in charge of Target Chip Ganassi. Chip Ganassi here, and you're talking to Dario or talking to your crew here. How comfortable is he in second spot right now? Well, he wants to win, you know. I mean, uh, but what's... First and foremost, we got to gain points on Will Power. He's behind us right now. We want to make sure we keep him there. How, uh, how good is the car? Have you made any changes as you went along? No, I mean, we haven't made a change to the car. We came in, put tires on it, put fuel in it, sent him away. And uh, it's still a long race. Anything can happen. All right. Um, tell me about the uh, the day you've been having this, or this weekend you've been having pretty good for Target Chip Ganassi. We've been having a pretty good weekend. We uh, we won the, uh, the Daytona prototype race in Watkins Glen uh, last night. And uh, just a few moments ago, we won the Cup race, the uh, next Cup Cup race with uh, Montoya. So we're pretty excited. That's Target's first ever victory in NASCAR. Got to be a pretty special day after a pretty special a couple of weeks ago as well. It's certainly a special day. Well, it looks like Target Jim Ganassi has been on a roll, guys. Can they do it today? Daryl Franchini told me this car only gets better as they get more grip out there on the track. So things are looking good for them today. Boy, they are having a good a couple of weeks. Of course, Jamie McMurray won the Brickyard 400 a few weeks ago. Wow. 2010 major wins for Chip Ganassi Racing, Jamie McMurray at the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400, and of course, Dario at the Indianapolis 500. Back in a moment on Versus. Runs on sugar. Sweet sugar cane ethanol. It's an advanced biofuel recognized by the EPA because it cuts greenhouse emissions by 60% compared to gasoline. And it can save you money at the pump. Fast and sweet and clean and lovely, the fuel from sugar can go racing. I can dance, nah, I cannot sing. But one thing we can agree, we race on ethanol. If you know passion, you know my name. If the roar of a race car gives you goosebumps. If you believe that no one ever remembers who comes in second. 
If you're into checkered flags, chugging milk, and burning rubber, you know my name. If you've ever pressed your nose to a chain link fence to get a closer look, if you own a pair of earplugs, if you know Andretti, Rahoff, and Unser, you know my name. Al Unser. You know my name because I've been here from the very beginning. As vital today as I was over a hundred years ago. hundred miles to go. I am a powerhouse. I am running wide open with no finish line in sight. I am the fire that never goes out. forever. I am Firestone, and I am proud. This September, college football returns to versus. We know what you Mountain West fans want. Can the Utes and Rebels hold off the Big East and Big Ten? Catch Pittsburgh at Utah Thursday, September 2nd, when the Utes make a stand against the rush of the Pittsburgh Panthers. And catch Wisconsin at UNLV Saturday, September 4th. This September, college football returns to versus. On board fast. with Scott Dixon here, yep. Yeah, that turn 11, that's just a very quick, fast, sweeping left-hander at 120 miles an hour. That's Marco Andretti up ahead. Marco is running 7th and Scott 8th. See the speed as you're rolling into turn 1 there? He was going 148 miles approaching that corner. Dumps the throttle a little bit down to about 130 back on the gas. That's the number we've seen at the end of the straightaway is 169, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. We'll find out if, uh... well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Simona De Silvestro. She's still running in six yeah. spot. I was starting to say earlier about Simona, one area that she's really learned and growing is in qualifying, how to maximize what you can from the sticker Firestone tires. You know, they have that sweet spot. And that's really, I think, part of why she's qualified so well these last two weekends, both at Edmonton and here, just really showing it. And it's, a, it's about just her ability to say, okay, now's the time to strike. The tires are at their, their optimum, and it's time to put down a lap. Well, I went up to Michael Cannon to just get a checkup on Simona, and he was writing all these numbers into a chart. He told me as soon as she left the grid, they lost all the telemetry. And guys, you can probably talk more about what that means they're having to do, but he said we're just having to do everything by hand and figure out all her fuel numbers. And if you don't have that telemetry, it certainly makes life more difficult, but Michael Cannon started engineering in the days when he didn't have telemetry, so he's had to revert back to the old days. There might be some new engineers without the computer who'd be thinking, uh, not a I do. And how many times have we seen that little shot where Marco's behind yeah. Simona, and right as they're going down into turn four, it just kind of pops out a little bit. I'm filling your mirror, and he's still there. Dan Weldon is still there in the 10th position, having a good run in the National Guard car. Panther Racing. Pretty solid run. I mean, you, you got to just come back to how competitive this field is all the way throughout. I mean, you know, you have one little hiccup, and it can take you from running in the top five to being back in the 15th. I mean, so you got to have everything tuned up. You as the driver, you know, getting along with your engineer, making sure the changes that you're making to the car are taking you forward. If you're making changes and going backwards, you just don't get caught up over the course of a race weekend. Weldon is, Weldon is currently ninth in the point standings. His best finish this year, of course, was at Indianapolis, where he was runner-up to Dario. Top of your screen, you can see the interval between first and second. It's just about a half a second. The preparation on that car, that Panther car, Danica had a lot of pit yeah. lane, so she's been in for service on lap 53. So that would be a stretch to get to the end. 
Yes, that would be most likely because you didn't get all the fuel on the previous pit stop, and now she's really going to have to soft pedal it to make it to the end. But maybe that's what they're banking on right now is to get some yellows and, and let her do that and hopefully gain track position. Graham Ray Hall running 13th. You can't really tell too much from looking at the top of his helmet with NTB up there, but just like he had last year, that's a retro helmet, just like what his dad used to run. And uh, it's pretty cool that he just pays that tribute to his dad. I mean, as a as a fan coming up, I remember very clearly the helmet that Bobby was wearing, the red yep. top with yep. the blue band around it and the white stripes. And he has been given hard. He's pushing Marias on pit road. A few other cars setting up. A lot simpler when there's nobody else in front of you or behind you there, as tight as this place is. Again, anyone who stops now is going to not be able to run flat out to the end. They might make it to the end, but they're not going to be able to be flat out. Jack? Guys, as we get ready with the window opening, you're starting to see some early pit stops. For the leaders, what you want to watch very closely is Ken Franchitti squeeze out an extra lap over Power and Castro Nevis. For Alex Tagliani, the big question mark is how deep into the window can he go? That's what we're looking at in this final one. Looks like Ryan Briscoe may be one of the first leaders to come on to pit road very shortly. If one of these Penske cars pits before Tagliani, that's off to Tagliani for having that was Briscoe. He took the pit lane. So amazing that Tagliani stopped two laps ahead and Briscoe is on pit road. That's that's some good fuel mileage for Tagliani, but he most likely will be in next lap around. Here comes Ryan. It looks like they're going with the Firestone Reds back onto the number six car. This is the winner for back in Texas. That was an oval. Now we're on a road course. And boy, you see just how close it is for not only the drivers, but the pit crews as the target car, Scott Dixon, just ahead of him. Well, that's surprising for Scott Dixon. He was the master of making fuel here last year. Rob, you mentioned yep. that at the opening of the show. He went a lot he's longer last. than anybody. Yep. So he's but been pushing hard. Here comes Kanan taking advantage of cold, tired Tires. Briscoe. And these are the money laps right now. What we're watching, how people cycle in and out and get tires right now, these are the money laps. Alex Tagliani should come on to pit road. And then Dario Franchitti knows that that will be, as you call him, Robbie, the money laps. The moment that he sees Tagliani peel off, he's going to just nail it and give it everything that he has to try and get a time yeah. advantage before he stops. Yeah, he's got to go a little bit faster. Can he go a second faster these two laps and get a little bit more of a gap? Wendy. Alex Tagliani in and right on his marks. He has asked for used red tires. This team did not test here last week like a lot of other teams did. So Alex said, we came in here with a tall order. He said right before this race as he pulls away that their goal today was to finish in the top six. He may be able to do that. Dario Franchini picks up the lead. So everybody really is liking the Reds. Even though those were used Reds, he said, hey, I want to put those back on. So it's not just that maybe they have more grip. It's also the balance they can put to the to the car. Because sometimes the Reds have more bite in the rear. The rears really settle the back of the car, assuming they don't go away. Also the standpoint, like you said, that durability of the Reds has just been fantastic here. Yeah. And that just gives you that extended window. Yeah, and, and normally that is the question mark, is is how long of a life do they have? And here it's been okay. Absolutely. That's what Jack is talking about. How many laps can Dario do? That's one more in the book. Okay, let's see what he does. He's going to trip the line here right now, guys. Uh, that last time by a 109.2, so he ran about two tenths quicker than the prior lap. So you got to keep pressing. If we talk about tense, oh, just two tenths here or there. But that's all it takes. Yep. Because right now you've got Tagliani running around with a full load of fuel on cold tires. And we should keep an eye on his lap time. Well, here comes Kanan again. Yeah, Tagliani came by 132. Of course, that factors in part of the pit stop. Robbie Floyd. Well, I noticed a little bit of pit courtesy because uh, Alio Castroneves just in front. They went to get their stuff out. They said, hey, let's wait till Tony goes. You see him going out with brand new set of flags, Firehouse, Firestone, Firehawks. Now goes TK. And now Alio sets up just in front of his flags. So a little pit courtesy for the guy you know is coming in just ahead. Oh, this is not at all what Dar Dario, in fact, was telling <laughs> Will Power was really concerned about Milka Duno being on the track and said, I hope the championship doesn't come down to that to someone who, in his view, shouldn't be on the racetrack. Oh! 
That's exactly what he talked about. He almost got taken out by Duno. And Elio decides to come in. And Frank Heaney stays out. So so right now, Dario needs to keep laying down those laps. He probably lost a couple of those tents we just talked about. He needs to get them back. And sure enough, he did. He did a, He lost a second on that last lap. Robbie? And it looks like Scuff Black's going to go out for Elio Casernevis. You're right. That little bump might have helped him a little bit. Trying to get that car completely full. So that, that little hang-up cost Dario a second. Oh, yeah. One second. Hideki Muto looks stalls. like having some problems yeah. if the car stalls on pit lane. Get the jumper. There's the plug cable to the jumper. They're just putting it over the wall. So Dario has just got by Milka, and she okay. stays at the inside of the track, and then on the outside goes power, gets out of the groove, gets a big wiggle, mm -hmm. and he was thinking, ooh, baby, that was a little too close well, for comfort. Well, too, when you get on the outside of that track, in that section of the racetrack, there is marbles up on the high side of the racetrack. And you can see that Tagliani is behind Castro Neves. Right. Castro Neves trying to get his car up to temperature. Tagliani is already there, but that's yeah. why track position helps you. Yeah, but you're in front, you can hold him up. Tags has got a pounce right now as he sees that little stripe on the, the right rear of Elio, knowing his tires are coming up to temperature. Now's the time to strike. And the third car there was Ryan Briscoe. Simona Di Silvestro has completed her final pit stop, or what should be her final pit stop. And she comes out right behind this group, because there they go. Wow. Briscoe shoots by, so that was nice work for her. Now Dario's crew is set up. So this is this is what just is going to be really fun to see, is him coming in, and where is he going to cycle back in this group? Is he going to be at the front, yep. or is he going to have to fight his way in there somewhere? 25 laps to go. Got to keep an eye on Will Power as well, because he may pit at the same time as Frank Keaton. Guys, keep in mind, because they have come a little bit longer than everybody else, they won't have to put as much fuel in. We always talk about it. Fuel travels at three, well, three gallons a second. Here comes Dario for service. Robbie Floyd, he's headed toward you. And Dario Franchitti getting ready to pull in right now. He's going with the Fire So Firehawk Reds. The right front will be a brand new red. It's just in front of his pit box is the number 12 of Pit of Will Power. They're holding Dario one turn on the left front of the wing. He goes well ahead, Will Power. Yep. And everybody's picking the reds. And look how far ahead they are of the next group. So that's why you run longer. He goes out in front of Castro Neves, Tagliani, and Briscoe easily. Yes, he does. Wow, look at the gap. Yeah, yeah. That's why you want to stay on course as long as possible. Well, Ryan Hunter Ray hasn't pitted yet. He is officially the leader, but when he pits, it'll be Franchitti, Power, Castro Nevis, Tagliani, Briscoe, and Di Silvestro. We'll be back with more at Mid Ohio in a moment on Versus. Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, we've completed 61 of 85 laps. And just as we were going to break, Graham Rahal stuffed it into the sand trap. Here's the onboard camera. He's back running now, but yep. that is the very corner he had trouble with a few moments ago. Here's the replay. Oh, down in the little, keyhole. A little bit of lockup going down the inside of Weldon. Keep it going through the pea gravel, which he does. <laughs> He kind of bumps into the tire wall here, obviously finds reverse and sneaks back out on the grass area. Yep, saves the full course caution. There's the lockup oh. right inside of Weldon. Very similar to what we saw with Sato, but yep. in this yep. case it was with hot tires. And, and that's where you just got to be heads up for Weldon right now. He says, okay, he's coming down. Man, he's going fast. Don't let me turn in. And, and right across your nose he goes. <laughs> And boy, he put some flat spots on those tires. Yeah. You can and, see that right front had and when a he big goes, flat spot. And when he goes back out on the track, oh, all this is that pea gravel, he takes back out on that racetrack with him. And this is a live shot now as we also have Dracone into the uh, sand trap. And we do have a full course caution. It's our third of the afternoon. Francesco Draconi. And let's take a look here at Dan.
Heineke and Milka. Ooh. What was going on there? She looked in the mirror, so she knew she was coming. Yeah, there's no history at this racetrack between those guys. Huh? <laughs> Take a look at what happened to Draconi here. And just slides the off. The car gets the... a little bit light there, Bob. That's right where the car gets a little light and you get a little bit of wheel spin. Down to Jack. Guys, I want to take you back to Alex Tagliani's pit stop. You know, when you're dealing with just scant tenths of a second, I want to draw your attention to your fuel man right here. Okay, now let's roll it. Here's what I want to show you. They're done. He is in. They're loading with fuel. They're getting the tires done. The tires will be done. And watch very clear, closely the fuel guy because he has a bit of a miscue removing the fuel nozzle from the car. I counted it down and tried when we did the replay. It was about three-tenths of a second. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're trying to chase guys down, I wonder if three-tenths of a second would have positioned him one car in front of where he is right now. Yep. Okay, so we're under caution once again. Our IZOD green pit stop performance, Alex Tagliani. With a good in and out lap. Over friend Petey and Power. Take another break and be back in just a moment. Under caution here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. The Honda Indy 200 on Versus is presented by Honda, the engine supplier for the IZOD IndyCar Series. And by IZOD, the official apparel sponsor of the IZOD IndyCar Series, available at Macy's. simple words and now it's time to join in announcing the claim your mazda summer sales event enjoy the high resale value of mazda 3 mazda 6 the driver's alternative to camry and accord or the seven passenger mazda cx-9 all available with zero percent apr financing for 60 months plus no monthly payments until november 2010 so why compromise claim your mazda offer ends august 31st at the Indy 500, drivers put complete trust in their cars. But when you're out on the road trying to make it to work, are you sure you can trust your motor oil? Put your trust in Peak Performance Motor Oil. Formulated to protect against thermal breakdown, Peak is the only motor oil tough enough to be the official oil of the Indianapolis 500. Whether you cover 500 miles in a few hours or it takes hours to get to work, you can count on Peak. When you peak, you win. One lap to go before green flag here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Dario Franchini out in front, but the big story here with the Ryan Hunter Ray Camp and the Racing for Cancer crew is Tiana Bishop. Tiana Bishop, a cancer sufferer here on invitation for Ryan Hunter Ray. What's it been like for you? It's been really cool being here. Is he one of your favorite drivers? Because I'm looking at your hands here, and your fingernails are telling a different story. Well, um, I only knew Danica until I got here, and so I was one of, she was my favorite, and now that I've gotten to know Ryan, it's kind of iffy for both. All right, now tell me, this isn't your first IndyCar race. You had some experience meeting a famous IndyCar driver way back, didn't you? Tell me about that. Um, when I was little, um, Sam goes to our church, and he used to do it with Danica, so... I kind of know him because he goes to my church, and 
today was also special because we got to see you walk across the stage with Ryan Unray. I believe we got that on camera. What was that like walking in front of all those fans that they cheered both of you on? It was pretty cool. Awesome spot. I, I want to talk to the lady to your left. Of course, Racing for Cancer, one of Ryan Hunter Ray's big sponsors. You're his fiance, Becky. But also, they can donate through, what is it, Racing for... Racingforcancer.org. If you go on the website, you can. they're doing a campaign of 37 right now in honor of Ryan's mom. And, of course, it's going to help out Tiani and Nan, too. So, uh, if you go to Racingforcancer.org, you can see everything online, do your donations. And also, at the track, if you're here, we have donation boxes set up at Andretti Hospitality and at the Racing for Cancer tent. Great job, Becky Gordon. Uh, Checking out her man, Ryan hunter as well as Tiana. You know, he was in the back of the pack not too long ago. We said, how far can the Izod car go? He's currently in 13th. <laughs> and Robbie Buell knows all too well about kids and racing. Sure do. Program that's been going on for many, many years. All right, here we go. The green flag comes out, and we're back to racing. It's Dario Franchini leading Will Power. Elio Castroneves, Alex Tagliani, Ryan Briscoe, and Milka Duno has spun. Still fired up. Yep. All right, so no full course caution. Here they come. Return number three. It looks like Dave Silvestro. You saw that wiggle. You're just going to say, it went to Robbie. I was going to say, look at Dixon. He's got it. And <laughs> look at these seven up. He's got the inside. There's nothing you can do, guys. No. That's that's what the rule allows no, it to right. happen. Now she has to set him back up and do the same thing back to him. Get a good run on him next time. Oh, oh here look comes Matos. Matos to the inside of Baguette. Now Mario Marias is built. Oh, Marias, a little bit of a wiggle. Still wiggling. Trust me, Weldon in the National Guard car, he sees Marias all over the place. He's like, hey, I want some of that. I'm coming. And we just talked about Ryan Hunter Ray. He's in that mix as well, yeah. right behind Weldon. This is 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Baguette is 10th, and Ryan Hunter Ray 13th. After the incident on pit road a little bit earlier that damaged some suspension but was repaired, and we're on board with him now. Weldon right up ahead of him through the keyhole, turn two. And what Ryan on the race just talking himself through there is he's coming off that keyhole. Oh, he wants caution. to get power down. And we got Dracone who spun there yep. coming on the front straightaway. And Milka also had to take evasive action. So it's the second spin by Draconi here in just a few laps. And another full course caution will slow the field. There's a little bit of debris on driver's left, screen right, so you're going to want to go on the curb side. You're going to want to driver's right here, go on the outside. Well, it's going to bring everybody back together for another yeah, it is. exciting <laughs> restart. Another restart. <laughs> I don't think uh, Dario probably wants that, but good for us here. Well, they're having them go through the pits. Yep, good idea. 17 laps to go here at Mid-Ohio. Under a full course caution, once again, it's Franchini, Power, Castroneves, Tagliani, and Briscoe. I compete with sugarcane ethanol. 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 Ethanol is the fuel we use on every IZOD IndyCar race. Cane ethanol diversifies America's fuel supply, and it should be in your tank. It's in mine. Learn more about advanced renewable sugarcane ethanol. Does anyone else have to turn up the volume when they eat wheat thins? Someone needs to invent crunch-proof headphones. He will be surprised. Tim Parker, do you remember when you tweeted, does anyone else have to turn up the volume when they eat wheat thins? Someone needs to invent crunch-proof headphones. Yes. All right, well, guess what, pal? Straight from wheat thins. No lab. way. We're going to try this. Ready? Okay. <laughs> That's a success. Let's roll. Bring it in. Come on, boys. Who's next?
There's a reason why. In four years of powering every car in the Indianapolis 500 race, not a single Honda engine has failed. It's not the parts we make them from. It's the part we put in to every Honda. IndyCar Nation, why aren't you a member yet? Follow me behind the scenes. Free timing and scoring. Free live video streaming. New and improved member benefits. The best IZOD IndyCar series content anywhere. Visit IndyCar.com and join IndyCar Nation today. Versus welcomes you back to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And there is the laid out of this facility here, which is about 50 miles north of Columbus. And it isn't all that far from Cleveland. We're about, I guess, midway between. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful facility, and we have completed 69 of 85 laps of our IZOD IndyCar Series race here this afternoon. Dario Franchitti is the leader of the race, and there you can see his finishes on road courses this year, with Toronto being his best finish a second. Right now, he has the advantage on Will Power, Castro Nevis, Tagliani, and Briscoe, with Dixon, De Silvestro, Andretti, Matos, and Baguette completing the top ten, Jack. Hey, guys, help me out. Dario Franchitti, left foot break or right foot break? Right, right. Right. Hey, guess who's in second? Will Power, left foot break. It'll be a classic confrontation of styles on this start and the rest of the race. On the watch. And well, the disadvantage that Will Power told you, Jack, was that he used a little more fuel, but because of these cautions, you don't care. Yep. So, nice, even playing field. And, and we know how blistering fast Power has been in qualifying and all the pulls that he's he's had this year. But, you know, now it comes to racing. It's one thing to be fast, but it's another thing to set somebody up and get by him and pass him. Just because you are you could be faster is one thing, but getting by him is a whole other day. You really got to get in his head. Season performance from Target Chip Ganassi drivers, Franchitti and Dixon. Dixon with two wins this year. Dario will come off corner number 13 and take the green flag to get us back under racing conditions. So I think that something we just need to look for is how guys are putting the power down off the keyholes. Who kept their tires clean and scrubbed? So when you do go to the power coming off the keyhole here, who's setting themselves up to make a good run and a pass as you get down into turn four? On board with Helio in third. board with Elio. Of the top five guys, he's the only oh, one on the black the sidewalls. Two leaders were on the overtake. It looked like Power thought about it. He moved his car just a little to the right. for Tagliani, and what a great move they made by that sequence of pit stops, a little bit of luck. Oh, side, side by, side, by side. side. Dixon and Briscoe. Dixon got the better of Briscoe. Okay, Simona now, come on, pounce. <laughs> was right behind him. I mean, you know, you, you got to take that momentum. When that guy in front of you loses momentum, get right there. Dixon jumps to fifth. Let's see if Simona will have passing in mind coming down here into turn number two. And again, there's Marco Andretti yeah. still yeah. behind Simona and still doing the same thing, just tucking out. I'm still here. Now, we also saw that pass by Rafa Matos into corner six. I was like, looking. Simona's doing exactly that. Just kind yeah. of popped out on Briscoe. Didn't, wasn't up alongside enough, but just let him know. I'm ready. In fact, Matos just used his overtake, and he wasn't really that close at, the, at that point behind Marco, so he must have done that to keep Baguette behind him. Well, that's what I say. Is I just wanted, since that worked so well for Matos that one time, was he going to look and try and do it again? Didn't work. Or I shouldn't say that. He just wasn't close enough to make it clean. There you go. Still have 
21 cars on the lead lap here of the 27 that started, and four are out of the race. You can see at the top of your screen. Well, I tell you, Dixon is racing. He's closing in really quickly on the back of Tagliani, and then look at this snake and how many people are getting off in the dirt on exit of turn one. Go back to the restart. Just off of turn number one. Closer. closer we saw some closer. dirt picked up, and now we know where it came from. And and that's right there. That shot of watching the... Ooh, look at that. You see Graham Rahal yeah. pinch that thing off and yeah. lay rubber? Yeah. Well, because you're like, what's behind that cloud yeah. of dirt? But that, that visual of coming to this racetrack and watching Matos behind Marco. So somewhere in there, like I said, we knew he was coming. Yeah. He made a stick. Matos to eighth. He's in the number eight, number two car, a little right there. Silver and blue and black. And he's HP. now right behind Simona. And Marco Andretti is under fire somewhat from Bertrand Baguette. Here's the pass. There you got Rafa down the inside, very cleanly. There's the 4-3-2 board as you come into that passing zone where you say, hey, if you're not attempting to pass somebody, you better be on the left-hand side of the racetrack. As Marco was, ooh, there he's sticking his nose in. Yeah. But be patient. Now's the time to do yeah. it. Get a good shot off of the keyhole so you can get it done down in turn four. I wanted to talk about Rafa Matos. I sat down with Gilles DeFerrin as well as Jay Pisky in Edmonton. And talking with them, I mean, you could tell how pumped they were, how much they were building for, because they are a new team. And they say, yeah, they make mistakes, but they're making smaller mistakes. So that gives them more opportunity to move forward. So a brand new team, a very good driver. And now you're seeing what can happen when they can put two and two together. They've got one heck of a race car, a fast driver, and moving up the field. DeFerrin Dragon Racing, and the chauffeur is Rafa Matos. And his last three finishes, a fourth at Watkins Glen. Twelve laps to go at Mid-Ohio. Welcome back to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Bob Jenkins, Robbie Buell, Jan Vikas in the booth, and Jack Aroot, Robbie Floyd, and Lindy Thaxton down on pit lane. And Franchitti continues to lead this race over Will Power by, well, that much, just about a second as Team Penske runs second and third. Ryan Briscoe is back in sixth between Castro Nevis and Briscoe are Alex Tagliani and Scott Hickson. Interesting to compare these two cars, obviously, one of the Penske cars being Will Power on the red alternates right behind Castro Neves on the black. Certainly by the speed we've seen from Frank Keaty, Castro Neves doing a great job hanging in there on the blacks. But again, this is still one trait, you know, depending on who you talk to, there was not as much disparity between those two as you do as we do go through this race on, on picking your tire choices. Hey guys, we're down to the final handful of laps, right? When you take a look and analyze the number of overtakes so still remaining for Dario Franchitti, Will Power, and Elio Castroneves. They've got enough to be able to use the overtake at least once in every remaining lap. Could be a little interesting there. Now what about Alex Tagliani in fourth? Well, unfortunately he's a little shorter in that department. Rafael Matos that we watched move up to seventh position has exhausted his overtake assists. He has none left. But he got the positions out of it. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. he was assisted in overtaking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Dixon definitely looks as though he's going to have something here for Tagliani before we get to the end of this thing. Yeah. He's definitely one guy that I think we want to see what he's got. is right on the rear wing of Tagliani. Now, the difference, again, coming to the, the reds and the blacks, Dixon's on blacks, Tags is on reds. The, the Firestone reds historically have a little bit more bite in the rear tires. So does that allow Tagliani to get to the power sooner as you come off there? Hunter Ray and Baguette. He's got it. This is for 10th. Hunter Ray takes it. 
and that is the opportunity that this blocking rule in place creates that kind of passing you can in, you can't be on the right hand side of that racetrack unless you're trying to pass it what a drive for ryan hunter ray who had been suspension they changed it got him back out there and he has moved up to the top 10. so what you take away from that is no matter what happens whatever never give up and look right. at his right hand you can just see how hot and how much he's working that car. You can see the sweat that's come through <laughs> the leather on his right hand there. That's how much you're working in that cockpit. Seven laps to go, and we thank our advertising partners for allowing us to show you what's going on during commercial breaks in our Versus Nonstop. We'll take another break and be back in a moment. Frankini leads at Mid-Ohio. Honda Indy 200 on Versus is presented by Honda, the engine supplier for the IZOD IndyCar Series. And by Apex Brazil. To learn more about our Brazilian goods and services, log on to experienceourenergy.com. And by Peak Performance Products. When you peak, you win. Select IZOD IndyCar driver. It started with two simple words, and now it's time to join in. Announcing the Claim Your Mazda Summer Sales Event. Enjoy the high resale value of Mazda 3, Mazda 6, the driver's alternative to Camry and Accord, or the seven-passenger Mazda CX-9. All available with 0% APR financing for 60 months, plus no monthly payments until November 2010. So why compromise? Claim your Mazda. Offer ends August 31st. Feel the excitement? That's peak performance. And it's electric. Look out. Be sure everybody's safe with the peak backup camera system. It installs in minutes, and anyone can do it. Check the color monitor, and you'll see what you can't see. Stop accidents before they happen. Protect your family with the Peak Backup Camera System and be safe out there. Inside, outside, all around your car. When you peak, you win. The intensity. Oh, it's a deep lock. That might send the Yankees to the World Series. The tradition. Five-part series chronicling the matchups that transcend Major League Baseball. The greatest MLB rivalries. Cardinals Cubs Tuesday at eight on Versus. Just five laps to go now here at Mid Ohio as Dario Franchitti continues to lead Will Power. Elio Castro Nevis and Tagliani and Dixon. Robbie Floyd on pit lane. Sometimes you have to have things go your way in racing. Look at this tie right here for Ryan Briscoe when they took it off the last time. Made contact with either Ryan Hunter Ray, Elio Castro Nevis, somebody. We were worried about Elio. But look at this. The sidewall totally ripped up, got into the rim in two different places. It's been, this is a lot of damage right now as he's got his hands full with Rafael Matos. But what could his race have been if these 25 pounds of pressure dropped to none in an instant? Things really are going uh, his way right now from actually being able to stay out there on the course. This is an unbelievable job these Firestone Firehawks did. I have no idea how they're even holding here. And there you can see how Matos is right there waiting for the opportunity. And do you think he's wishing that he had another overtake just to get a little yeah. bit closer because yeah. he's got none left? Top three cars right now are all on their overtakes. These two are <laughs> going after it. And you heard Chip Ganassi say they have to finish ahead of Will Power. They would certainly like to finish more than just one position ahead of him, but they'll, the biggest gap in the points is between first and second, so that's still going to help. Yep. It's nice when you can strip it and it works that way, huh? Man. 
remember the race started on the back stretch, but will end here on the front stretch. And Power, you know, he's doing everything he can. I mean, he's staying close enough and in touch with Dario. If he has any hiccup or whatsoever, that's the window for Power to, to get in there. And he's pushing him. Yeah, yeah no, he, he is. is. Right there. Oh, yeah. And Power was on the overtake button before they came out of that keyhole corner. Yeah, Power's getting on it earlier than is Dario. And that yeah, was so a little bit what he did, actually, in Edmonton. It led to that whole scuffle down in turn number one, is that he got on the button before Elliot. Yeah, he got on the button before anybody. You know, the corners coming onto that front yeah. straight, and he was the first guy on it. You're right. Fellas, what I'm also noticing is I've been watching the telemetry between Dario and Will, and I'm not trying to belabor left foot, right foot, but if you remember when we talked to Will Power at the top of the show, he said it allows him to do a little bit different going into the corner. I'm watching it specifically down in turn nine. Will Power is able to do a little drag break where Frankini is either got to be on the throttle or on the brake, so Power is able to control the nose of the car just a little bit better, I think. Well, those, are, you know, as you talk about that, Jack, and what you can do with just dragging your left foot on that brake and it keeps the nose of the car down, it keeps weight on it, you know, that's just all the subtleties. I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but those are just all the subtleties it takes just to be that much better, that much quicker. And each driver sets their car up for what their style is. He's close. Not, not close enough, but he's, he's right there. <laughs> going to have one more lap to do it because they will get the white flag when they cross the finish line this time. Dario Franchitti has one of those overtakes and Will Power has two. White flag waves. One more lap to go on this two and a quarter mile mid Ohio Spurgeon. And Frankini now stretches it out just a little bit. We'll see what Power is able to do here in one of the prime passing zones. Nothing. Break in there, but you know he's going to go the overtake button. And Power goes to it first. They both get a little bit in the dirt. Frankini has yet to use his. Power now not he's close enough. enough. He's not close enough to draft up. Just about it as far as passing opportunities are concerned, but who knows? You still stay right there. Keep, keep pressing. Keep in mind, Frank Heaty is out of overtakes. Will's got one with a recycle, give him enough time to use it. Yep. Well, not since the Indianapolis 500 in May has he visited Victory Lane. But today, Dario Franchitti tightens the point race just slightly. Uh, Nevertheless, great job, guys. Great it's a win today. in the Honda Indy 200 in Mid-Ohio. Dario Franchitti beats Will Power. Castro Nevis, Tagliani, Dixon. Simona gets an eighth position out of it. And Ryan Hunter Ray is tenth. J.R. Hildebrand in his first Eyes on IndyCar Series race finishes in 16th position. Danica Patrick is 21st. And Robbie Floyd is with Chip Ganassi, who wins again today. I know, and high fives, handshakes all around. The first guy you shaked his hand was Barry Wanzer to your left. I mean, he had this thing dialed in from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, Barry and Chris, they just, the team had things wired here today. You know, they had the strategy right. And uh, it's just a, it's been a great weekend for the whole team. What does it say about your team? You're 127th, 28th, 29th in your automobile racing career for your team. Um, you know, we got a lot of wins to go yet. I, I mean, that's not, you know, 
Um, I, don't, we, we, I don't keep score. I just want to, you know, that's that's what we're here for, though. We've only just begun. Hey, uh, Barry Wanzer, I've got to get you into this because you were all smiles yesterday. Dario was all smiles. How good does it feel when your driver comes off the track and goes, man, we've got a fast race car? You know, it feels pretty good. It uh, doesn't guarantee any results, but it certainly helps uh, with the confidence for everybody. And certainly the guys uh, in the pits today certainly made the difference. Did you know when he said, you know, you started working on the car and it kept getting better and better as the grip, you know, started happening and other people might have been backing up? Yeah, it seems like as the track gripped up, it came to us. And, uh, you know, that's pretty rare, so we, we'll take advantage of it when we can. And we, like Chip says, we take it race by race. Played out perfectly. The number 10 target car makes his way to victory lane. I'm ready to uh, head to talk head to talk to Dario Franchini in just a little bit. But things are very happy in the target camp. Well, it's Dario's 25th open wheel win, moving him into a tie for 12th place on the all-time winner's list with Gordon Johncock. We have uh, about a half hour that we can spend with you post-race here, and we will be back to talk with the winner, Dario Franchitti, in a moment. His second win of 2010, the other being, of course, at the Indianapolis 500. Dario Franchitti is his first win at Mid-Ohio, but the sixth for car owner Chip Ganassi. And officially, the... Uh, Interval was a half a second between Dario and second place finisher Will Power with Castro Nevis, Tagliani, and Nixon the top five. Well, Will Power, congratulations. You have clinched the road course championship. You now have the Mario Andretti trophy. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. You know, uh, go up Mario Andretti, uh, fantastic. One of the best races of all time. Um, but we're going for the overall championship. You know, we uh, couldn't get Dario today. I gave it everything I got. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was still a strong day. But that's the guy we've got to beat, you know. So, um, yeah, still a good day. Very happy for the Verizon guys. Did it really come down to when Dario passed you in the pits, you think? Yes, it did. I mean, uh, he got us in the pits there and just couldn't get him back. You know, I was hoping to go a lap longer than him, get him on um, the next stop. But, uh no, nah, couldn't get him, and uh, it's really tough to pass around here, so uh, if he didn't make a mistake, I wasn't going to get by. Going back to the road course championship, do you feel like a little bit of a comeback story after breaking your back in a crash last season and coming back and doing as well as, you, as you've done so far? Uh, I just focus on getting better, um, you know, getting in the car and being as quick as I used to be, and that's, that was my aim, and we're at the top right now, but he's catching. And on to another road course. Yep, one more road course. Uh, we look forward to that one. Well, power, thank you. Jack? Yeah, Lindy, while we wait for Dario Franchini to make his way to victory lane for the formal trophy presentation and all the hoopla that goes with that, I want to talk to you about a guy that, uh, Alex Tagliani, a calculated risk on your part. What was the thinking between you and Rob? Because I knew Rob Edwards and you really had planned that even before they dropped the green flag for the race. Well, it's, it's all the boys, you know, like uh, Rob is a pretty risky guy, but Alan, Brendan, Robert, you know, they, they all went for it. And um, we had a great car. The boys did a fantastic job on the car, consider we didn't test here. So very pleased. And, and uh, when you have a, a good car, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to uh, stay up front and fight for the lead. This Bowers and Wilkins team is brand new this season, and you were so excited from the get-go at Brazil. Is it progressing as you expected or unexpectedly better than you expected? Um, I expected uh, that we were going to be where we are now. We've been having uh, some little issues on the road course, so uh, our best car is uh, the Oval for some reason. Uh, our second best car is street course and our third best car is the road course. Maybe today the road course became the second best. Let's talk a little bit about when you were out there because you ended up leading the most laps, denied Frank Keedy that bonus point there. How did it feel, Tags, being out in front of all these big dogs? It felt good. I mean, it, it happened in Texas. You know, it's, it's really difficult when you're in the back on tracks, so difficult to pass like this one. So I'm very pleased that the strategy worked out. You know, thank you to the Bowers and Wilkins CD well, Logistics. You want, you want to thank the guy? Here he is right here. How you doing, buddy? Good job. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a risky guy. And uh, Alan McDonald before the race said, uh, it's going to go yellow right after you stop. And it did. So, you know, he should play Lotto tonight. Can, 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 I, can I ask you a big favor? Yes. Can I take him and Alan to Vegas tonight? Yes. Okay. Yes, I might, you can come I, with me. I might take them with me to Vegas. Okay. Bob? Alex Tagliani with his best finish of the year. Previous to this, his best was a sixth at St. Petersburg, but he brings it home in fourth position here this afternoon. 
As far as the points are concerned, well, Dario now is within 41 of the leader, Will Power, with Dixon 82 behind. And then comes Briscoe, Castro Nevis. Ryan Hunter Ray dropped a position. Elio gained one today. Tony Kanan stays in seventh. Marco gained one. Wilson lost a position, and Dan Weldon stayed in the tenth spot. Once again, here at Mid-Ohio this afternoon, the winner was Dario Franchitti. And we will be back to talk with him when we continue our coverage here on Versus. Thicker looking, guaranteed. Welcome back to Mid-Ohio, and Izod salutes a winning performance with Izod Victory Lane. Here's Robbie Floyd with Dario Franchitti. Dario Franchitti doing some aerial, aerial interviews here. I'm going to jump in. That's what you get when you're the champion, buddy. What does it feel like for you, not only taking your 15th IZOD IndyCar victory, your 25th open wheel victory this weekend? Uh, they're all the same to me. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't distinguish between the one and the other. It's 25, and I'm quite, I'm quite surprised by that that we got there, and I'm really, really proud. I think that's a lot to do with driving great equipment throughout my career, and you know, couldn't be happier to to be part of Team Target that first pit stop today. God, that, that won us the race. Will in his interview said uh, that was the key to victory. Do you think you still could have won this thing without that pit stop? Would have been difficult today. Will and I, I think, were very evenly matched on pace. So to say I go out there and pass him, I don't think that's that on on the track. I don't think. I'd be telling the 100% truth. It'd be very, very difficult to do that, as, as it was difficult for him to come up and, and, and try and pass me. Um, so there we go. But a good weekend for for, for Chip Ganassi and, and, and Target and Team Target. You know, Montoya winning off at the Glen, us winning here, and Scott and Memo winning the uh, the, the Grand Am race last night. So. The Ganassi Triple, I think they're calling it already. Yeah, it's a, I told them that's what we call a hat trick in uh, in Scotland. So pretty good job by uh, by Chip and um, proud to drive for him. How about the importance of uh, getting those points on willpower, making up points? You didn't get the most laps led though, but made up quite a few points. Yeah, we didn't get most laps led, but we, we uh, what was the difference, 10 between first and second or something, so we made some points up today after finishing on the podium, but finishing behind him mostly every time recently has got a bit old, so it's nice to actually make some points up, and it's not over yet, and we'll just keep fighting. Road street course now, it looks like you got the car dialed in. How does this feel heading into Sonoma in two weeks? We had a great time at Sonoma last year, leading from the pole, leading every lap. Whether we can do that again, who knows, but uh, we're going to test in there this week. Um, actually, Friday, so I'm looking forward to that, and we'll see what see what we got from there. But each race man, you just got to push 100%. Lindy Thaxon have a very good feeling that Dario is going to be smiles when he heads into the California sunshine next week. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Robbie. Elio, first of all, can you talk about your different strategy out there? That's right. Uh, we decided to put a reds on it, uh, go a little bit different than the other guys. Certainly, the track still a little bit of green, not so much grip, and um, it'll be great. Unfortunately, the guys in front of me as well. So uh, I'm in probation. I have to behave myself, but uh, you know, um, I have I have more to lose than him, so I decided to um, keep right there with him, and um, it was too early in the race. So um, after that, we just uh, looked like we uh, opened up a big gap between the rest of the guys, and then we put the blacks on. Um, it was not that bad, you know, I was able to keep it up with those guys, but towards the end, I was like, eh, why let him push the guy, try to win the race, and hopefully uh, he can win the race, but unfortunately didn't. What happened earlier in the pits with Ryan Hunter Ray? Yeah, it was a shame. Uh, uh, certainly, we had a very good exit. Um, he, he laughed, and I was a little bit quicker than him. And as soon as I went to the outside, unfortunately, it's it's crowded, and um, probably he didn't see me. And uh, but I was already like um, more than a half car there. So um, it's a shame because I don't know what happened to his car, but certainly in my car, uh, the tolls uh, kind of uh, uh, upset a little bit. Uh, but uh, again, when you have a tight pits like this. Uh, you hope nothing happened to you, but unfortunately this day was uh, happened to us. And thank you very much, Elio. And the good news Elio was saying earlier is that he did get some points today, and that's helped. Fifth place for Scott Dixon, the teammate to Dario Franchitti, who went to victory lane. But this target Chip Ganassi team is doing absolutely what they must do to try and hold Team Penske at bay in, in the chase for the championship. Yeah, definitely. Well, Dario, at least in the 10 car, you know, <laughs> the 9 car, we're not doing that so well. You know, uh, we had a pretty good run going for the first stint. Um, you know, I think we had a, a solid third place car as far as speed goes, and, and uh, you know, we had a, a gun jam in the pits. And when you lose sort of seven or eight spots in pit lane, you know, it's extremely tough to get them back, and especially at this place. So. So, you know, we, uh, we tried a few things strategy-wise. It was very tough with the small pit windows, but, uh, you know, fifth place wasn't too bad in the end. But we just, uh, we've got to 
to stop trying to eliminate these mistakes. Scott, what a lot of people are being maybe misinformed about or just because for the first time in the history of the Indy Racing League, they've kind of clumped together the road courses and the ovals and then some more road courses. Everybody looks at what Dixon has, I mean, what, what Will Power has done on the road courses and tend to forget that guys like you, guys like Frank Heaty, you know, when you get to the ovals, it's a different kettle of fish. Yeah, it'd be interesting. You know, yeah. the, the, the ovals left, um, you know, I think Penske are very good at anyway. Will, you know, I think even looking at Iowa with the pole, he's definitely picked up his pace on a lot of these ovals. So in Texas, he was good until we had a problem there. So, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be the whitewash that, that some people may think that, that uh, we will have over him. You know, I think, and obviously he's going to be pushing to the end because he's, you know, I, seen the championship I, I, I guess the one that I'm thinking about is you guys can recreate problems for him, but his own teammates can also do it too because let's face it, teammates are one thing, but everybody wants to win. And on ovals, Briscoe and Gastroneves are pretty stout too. Exactly. You know, that's the thing. And then and especially those guys, you know, they've had a, you know, a bit of a drought this season as well. You know, they want to get back to victory lane and, and uh, you know, they've had quick cars on the ovals, and especially the last ones to come. So, yeah, they're going to be fighting. And, and anytime you have close competition, you know, it could be a teammate that you come in to take an L. You and Dario might want to take them out to dinner and, you know, plant that thought. Exactly. Well, I'm <laughs> sure they can do it by themselves. They have already. So we'll see what happens. Thanks, Dixie. Thanks, man. Guys. Fifth place finisher, Scott Dixon, here at Mid-Ohio today. Team Penske still has the most career wins at 41, but target Chip Ganassi Racing is closing in. We'll be back to talk, among other people, with Rafa Matos, who had a great race today, finishing seventh. You can you win. Victory Lane still going on here at Mid-Ohio. Dario Franchitti wins the Honda Indy 200. Here's the recap with Jan Vikas. And, of course, the start was great up at the front, especially for Sato in the Lotus Colors. Forces his way up to second place, but look at the back. Tony Kanaan gets wide across the gravel trap, but thankfully keeps it underway. Now, a few laps later, not so lucky for Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson said that Viso should have given him more room. Viso said he wasn't alongside me. Unfortunately, the end result, Justin Wilson with a broken front suspension is out. Lap number 25 here was the part that we just heard from Castro Neves. Very, very tight quarters with only 35 foot pit boxes. The three-way squeeze and Ryan Hunter Ray definitely had damage. And look out for Sato. No tire warmers in IndyCar. Cold tires, heavy car, pow, into the tires. He was trying to make up time. Lost on pit road. Lap number 58. This is where we have a little bit of traffic. Milkaduno tries to stay to the right. Willpower gets out to the high side. Out. Castroneves says, I've had enough of that. I'm going to make a pit stop. But Will Power was very fortunate not to get out and off course completely. And, of course, that left him for a run for the final pit stop. He hoped maybe he could pit faster than Dario Franchini. But they both have said in the post-race interviews it was the previous pit stop, the first one of the day, that really put Franchini in the position to win here today. So the race summary, Franchitti led 29 laps, but Alex Tagliani led 30, so he gets the credit for the most laps led. We had five cautions, 15 laps, four liters, four lead changes, and the average speed 100 and a half miles an hour. Robbie Floyd is with Rafa Matos, who now has two top ten finishes on road courses this year. Even more than that, last year he had three top eights. This year you have four top eights. Buddy, I mean, you're starting to get things going. When I was talking to Gilles, he said your mistakes are oh so little compared to what they were at the start of the year. Yes, I think so. It was a fantastic race. Uh, I think the team did an amazing job in the pit stops. We were able to gain really five positions in the pit stops. And, you know, we certainly needed this result after a, a disappointing weekends in Edmonton and Toronto. And also a disappointing qualifying effort here for us. I started 19th, not so bad, finishing uh, seventh. And, you know, we had a great car in the race. Uh, I was able to uh, save fuel when I needed to. I was able to push really hard. When I when I needed to, and you know, I I think it was a great effort uh, all the way around of the team, and I'm very pleased. Jill, what's it like for you working with this guy? I mean, you're new to the team, you know, owner of the team, and you're helping out with the road and street while Davey helps with the ovals. It looks like you've kind of got things going. 
Well, I mean, uh, I think that we're evolving. You know, we're getting better and better as, as time goes on. I mean, we're a young uh, operation. And, uh, you know, today was a very good day for us. I mean, Rafa was uh, the fastest car on the racetrack, uh, but particularly at the last stand. It was great to see that. Uh, you know, had we not started so far back, we probably could have finished even better. But, uh, you know, it's a great job today by Rafa. Great job today by the team. We always made position in every pit stop. And we have probably one of the fastest cars. So we're learning, we're getting better, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to improve. Lenny Thaxton, you know this team has a positive mindset as they make their way to Sonoma as well. And I'm with Simona Di Silvestro, and we talked to Michael Cannon earlier, and he said the telemetry went out as soon as you left the grid. How was it on your end? Yeah, it was weird. You know, they tell me that there's no telemetry, so I have to tell them the numbers the whole race. You know, they kept me pretty busy pretty much the whole race. But uh, it worked out well. You know, our pit, pit stops were really good. The race was really good, too. You know, we're keeping up with the big teams, and I think we can pre be pretty happy with that. Your best finish here of eighth. Is momentum a thing that you really do feel? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I think at Edmonton we were running sixth uh, pretty much uh, until the, the middle of the race. And, you know, you just kind of get that confidence that you can actually do it. And, uh, you know, the car is getting more and more how I like it. And uh, uh, every change we make is really positive. So I think we're really working well together. And, you know, I really have to thank the team because they, they worked their butts off. And it's just uh, it's just great to be part with them. In the drivers' meeting, they talked a lot about how tight these pit boxes were. How did it feel during the race? I know. I get, I get yelled at all the time during practice because I never hit my marks but in the race I finally hit them so uh, uh, you know it was pretty tight especially that first one on the yellow I was like oh my god how am I gonna get in here but I hit them right and uh, you know maybe it's the pressure and I, I, get, I get it right when I have a little bit of pressure but yeah I, I get yelled out pretty awesome because I never hit them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much Simona. Bob a good day for her and her team. Yeah her best career finish prior to today was a ninth at Toronto today she finishes in eighth position the champagne is flowing the crowd is making its way out of middle Ohio Sports Car Course, where Dario Franchitti won today. Our Firestone Pit Performers of the Day, Ryan Briscoe and the crew who spent a total of one minute, ten seconds on pit lane. And Ryan is standing by with Robbie Floyd. Finished in sixth place. The car had to be a handful. You find out you've got a bin suspension or bin stuff on the car. How, how much of a handful was it? It was a bit of a handful. I, I told the guys after that pit stop, we had contact. There was Hunter Ray, uh, Castro Nevis, and then I got into it. And uh, after we got going, I was like, man, it, it's turning really sharp to the left, and it's, it won't turn to the right. I said, something doesn't feel right, but we just kept pushing. It was a real handful. I feel uh, pretty lucky today to come home in sixth place. Especially when he pulls off and looks at that tire and sees how much damage is there as well, Lindy. I have Ryan hunter Ray, and I understand broken left suspension with the incident in the pits. You replaced that. You come back up to 10th, but um, you didn't really feel like things were quite right. Yeah, the guys did an unbelievable job getting a piece of susp suspension fixed under yellow to stay on the same lap, but um, yeah, the right rear toe link was still bent, and um, every time I turned in for the fast corners, it would over-rotate, so I had to really be careful with it. Almost lost a few times, lost it, but... Um, I had a great time coming through the traffic, and we went from like 24th, 5th, somewhere in there to 10th. So, you know, sometimes it's these performances of these days that are most important rather than the big ones when you win and stuff like that. So, these guys, we dug, dug deep, had a good day, good finish. Um, it's disappointing. I think we had one of the one of the better race cars out there. And, we just didn't have a, a chance to keep it uh, keep it up at the front with the uh, incident with Elio here. So, unfortunate, but it's the way it goes sometimes. Ryan, thank you. Jack, Thanks. over to you. Time for the final word, and it belongs to the guy that made the call. Good pit stops all day. Chris Simmons, how difficult was it to leave Dario Franchitti out for one more lap in that last stop? Well, we knew he could handle it. We, uh, we knew we just had to push as far as we could to try to get by Will Power. That's who we were racing, and the uh, guys did a great job in the pits all day long, and hats off to Dario. He finally got to win on uh, one of America classic racing circuits. What about the decision-making process? Was it by the computer or was it by the gut? Well, we always use the computers, but it takes a little bit of gut, too. And uh, Chip was over there chewing his nails uh, the last few laps, but uh, pretty exciting to uh, to get through it with him. And uh, so he didn't raise yet, but I did get him to go halves on a lottery ticket with me. Congratulations. Thank Bob? you Bob? Okay, well, best season finishes, Dario Franchitti. Uh, of course, his, it equals his best finish of the year. Tagliani had his best finish of the year. So did Matos, Di Silvestro, Baguette, and Jay Howard. And now we have one more race on a road course. That will be in two weeks at Sonoma, California, in Finneon Raceway. 
And then we end the series on four ovals. It's going to be fun, and you will see it all here on Versus as we conclude the year. Well, coming up next, Racer TV. Be sure to tune in Saturday at 6 Eastern for our mid-season review. And join us in two weeks, Sunday, August 22nd at 5 o'clock Eastern for the Indy Grand Prix of Sonoma. IZA, the official apparel sponsor of the IZON IndyCar Series, available to Macy's. For more information, log on to the IZON IndyCar Series versus .com. I'm Bob Jenkins. We'll see you in two weeks at Infineon Raceway in Sonoma.